Two weeks later, <clears throat> y'all been, I've been with that pack for two weeks, smoking it nonstop with the shit that you suggested. Yeah. I still, based off the chemical imbalance in my brain, still am ready to kill myself. Hey, I, I had a two weeks life, lifespan to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you still here? <laughs> no, worry, and ma. All, all I'm saying here is, we go. And listen, I don't, I'm kind of under the weather, so just. It's cool. You know what I mean? But <clears throat> Britney's dad wasn't wrong. I have been saying Britney, from the jump. Britney Spears' dad, it was he knew something we didn't know. And he was trying to just protect, you know, the one person on earth that he probably loves more than anybody. It was kind of in a weird way. And it came across to us as, you know, controlling and manipulative and things like that. But ever since she got freedom of her estate and her money, she's been on the Internet going crazy. I mean, rarely do I try to take I was there first credit. This time, I think I was the only one publicly going. You were hey, definitely one of the first ones. Sure. Hey, I think Britney's dad may have had a point. Yeah, one hundred percent. Nobody could say that because then you know mental health and all that other shit, and it was <laughs> yeah. contracts, and she was. Yeah, yeah, it was. But I mean, I, listen, as someone that also is crazy, I can see it in the eyes. Yeah, like crazy knows crazy. Yeah, it's a it's an energy. You can see it. You can be like, okay, this person is is not. You this know. isn't performative, like yeah, no, no, no. This is this real. isn't a skit. No, this is real. This is real. <laughs> she this has is knives a... in her crib, yeah, 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 going yeah, yeah. like this. And if it is a character, she chose a really bad character. <laughs> it's an but awful a character. character for what exactly? Like you what can movie tell is this? When people lean into things, she's not leaning like into Kevin Spacey himself. choosing to live as uh, Frank man? Underwood or whatever that guy's oh. name is. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> choosing to live as a straight man. Oh, okay. Whatever. I don't think he's trying to live as a straight man, is he? I know, not anymore. He doesn't have a choice though. It's not about a choice now. Wait, he's he's not openly gay. Yeah, he is openly gay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I, I mean, like, I think so. No, I think it's fucked up. That I just that he was touching boys, but I didn't know he was also hiding that he was gay. He was touching boys. Yeah. That's what he got yeah. me too for. No, it oh. wasn't like women. No, it was. Yeah, it was, it was all, all. Oh, he was like he went the church route. Yeah. yeah okay. Got yeah. it. Oh, okay. A lot, lot of young, young child boy stars. Yeah. The point is, after he got outed, he he became Frank Underwood. Britney seems to become. Now we're seeing the person that her father knew the whole time. Right. Which is not good. Yeah. And they didn't even do like a cool marketing plan like Sasha Fierce, Beyonce. What was uh, Mariah Carey's around the heartbreaker time? Santa, Santa, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> not, Mrs. Claus was not her other. Oh. She had like some other. Mimi. Was it Mimi? Might have been Mimi. I, I forgot. Yeah, the Emancipation of Mimi was the name of the album. No, I'm talking about heart, when I went my first concert ever. Uh, Bianca? She boxed her. At the Heartbreaker tour in the Garden. It was my first concert ever that my mom took me to. Your first concert was I've, Mariah Carey? I've said that on here, yeah. My first concert ever was Mariah Carey Heartbreaker tour. She has an alter ego, Bianca. Maybe that's who it was. They put a, they put a boxing ring in the Garden, like, and she Yeah, it was during Heartbreaker. She boxed. You think I'd forget my first concert? She boxed her, her, <coughs> her alter ego. Alt her alter ego. Uh, it's the bad version of her. It's the evil version of Mariah Carey. Bianca. Bianca. She won the fight. Bianca? No, Mariah Carey won the fight while she was performing. <laughs> was that a subtle shot at Beyonce? No, this is before Sasha Fierce and Beyonce. Okay. Yeah, oh, was, yeah. that was Yeah, that way was before. That was early, that was early, early, yeah. like late 90s, early 2000s. Early 2000s for sure. That yeah. wasn't in the 90s, right? Julian, are you looking? Well, I have to type with one hand. I don't have a mic stand, so it's kind of difficult. It was definitely the 2000s, I think. Jesus Christ. It was it the 90s. Been, it might have been 2000. Um, well, anyways, we are recording <laughs> from a secret location. 99. 99. Okay. Oh, there you go. See? You know, Ma, you know we stay hidden in the hills. <laughs> no, no, we don't. <laughs> it's a secret Actually, location. Yeah, it's we're not at a secret a, location right we now. Are at a we're hidden in the hills. We are at a secret we're location. We're in one of the tunnels. We're, 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 we're not in the tunnel. Triple entendre. Don't even ask me how. I'm not going to ask you anything. Oh, I hid we, and hit. Never mind. I'm, I got it. It's cool. We, we, are, we are at a secret location. In a secret. That's, it, it's fine. Um, you know, <laughs> came out here to uh, talk some shit. Super Bowl. I Before, didn't see y'all since, since when? What, what was it? Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Monday. Yeah, it's it's a night cast, by the way. We're recording currently. It's 10 p.m. where we are, and it's, it's 10 p.m. three hours I, behind. I'm fucking sick, but um, fuck it, man. Let's pot. Before we get to the long list of topics we have to get to, yeah. I want to ask, out the gate, do you travel with your own soap? Because I'm starting to find things out about the crew 
that is making me judge them a little bit. Yes, I travel with my own toiletries. So do I. Yeah. So today when we were thinking about like, yo, we got to go to Ralph's to do like a whole run for the crib. Mm -hmm. People are bringing up shampoo, body wash, lotion. I'm like, y'all don't travel with that? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, well, to be fair, I travel with it, but sometimes I forget to pack it. So I always have to hit like a pharmacy and get the travel side shit whenever yeah. I land somewhere. But most times I do travel with all my toiletries though. And I feel like if you're all checking bags, I put the the big Dr. Bronner's <coughs> in my bag. Cause I'm oh, you checking. Carry, oh, you carry, oh, okay. I do soap, face well, yeah, wash, if you, if you everything, my own in, lotion, yeah, yeah, yeah. like all that. I don't care if you're staying in the nicest hotels. Yeah. I don't trust it. Yeah, no, I, I, I'd rather use my own products that I my, I normally use. Certain things I'm like particular about, but so I don't know. I feel like most of the time, unscented lotion is fine. Things are like that, but I don't know. Like beard stuff, hair stuff, I'm pretty, I need my shit. But you have, you bring your own shit though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't travel and try to get like a specific beard. No. That's like very specific. Yeah, they wouldn't have that. Yeah. I was just curious because before you pulled up, that was a conversation. And I thought maybe I was the one in the minority that traveled with their actual soap. No, I, no, I do. But it, so at, sometimes I'll I'll have like just the basics and I'll need like body wash and lotion and mouthwash and shit like that. And you get that travel side shit at any CVS. You know what I do that I think is important? And I think everyone that travels a lot should. I travel with a candle from my apartment. Because everywhere I go, especially like in a bedroom or whatever, I would bring it on tour of the green room. It smells like home. It's very important to me. I mean, it's a, it's a little gay, but I also do the same thing. A little, a like little I, I keep that little, point to myself. Does that make Roy gay? Oh, yeah. Big no, gay. if you don't, you're way more Kevin Spacey with it because you talked about it. I always bring a candle to every Because I talked room. about it. Doesn't every I single hotel room, I bring a candle. Because I talked about it. <laughs> well, that's, that's what you do. You give like a very inviting scent. Especially then, if I'm checking the bag because I've. I was doing it all the time, even when I wasn't checking a bag, and that just gets annoying at TSA. And you already guys, you guys know how I am. They're gonna stop you regardless if you have a candle. Yeah. So if I'm not checking, I've I've pulled back a bit, but forever I was always had a candle. Anytime I went to any hotel. On the way out here, uh, because I travel with the cameras in the uh the Pelican case. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I already knew once you go through TSA Check and it. they yeah, right. <laughs> I don't already know once you go to TSA, they're gonna pull you over and be like, yo, who's bag? Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for it. And so I'm just like, cool. I'm not I'm not mad at him opening the Pelican case and just looking at it. But if he would have started taking shit out, because if you ever looked in the Pelican case, it's packed very like sp it's specific. Very specific. Yeah. It's very specific. And I'm like, I'm not about to stand here and wrap these lenses. Yeah, and you're not a cameraman that's yeah, yeah, used to knowing don't how to like, do this shit. <laughs> I'm I'd not be terrified. Like I'm yeah, this I'm is like, in my department. Like, so he kinda he kinda dude was cool. A dude at JFK, he was kinda cool because he opened it and he looked and then he kinda looked at me. He looked at his coworker like, like I'm not about to go through this shit, man. Like and I I looked at him, I was, I gave him a look like bro, please don't start <laughs> taking that shit out because I'm gonna like I'm gonna be mad if I have to put all of this shit back, man. But he was cool. He just looked at it, saw it was camera equipment, and he just let me go. They gave me shit uh, with the scarlet and the other thing we have for my karma's beautiful for the live performances that we're doing. I had that in my carry on, and if I looked at it, because you know, back to being kind of gay, I have like my tote bag that's like open. I didn't put it in the suitcase <laughs> or anything. You know, I'm walking with my man purse. Yeah. At the top of it, it definitely looked like I had one of the biggest explosives on planet fucking Earth. The amount of knobs and Just cords. Switches, I was like, this yeah. looks like I'm about to strap it to my body yeah. and threaten the pilot. Yeah. And I was definitely stopped and was asked. This was the first time that when I wasn't going through customs, someone asked me what something was. Mm -hmm. Like, what is this? And I'm like, it's for like, sound equipment. Yeah. And I mean, they just did the bomb, you know, when they wipe it down with the bomb shit. Yeah. They little boozied it. Yeah. But I'd never been asked at TSA, what is this? That's only a customs thing. Well, they, I mean, they see equipment all the time. I just think that they never saw that type of equipment in a tote bag. Exactly. That's where it just seems a little like, all right, fam. Like, Should I have brought duct tape with it just to like really spice things up at TSA? If you wanted to get through, no. <laughs> it's like, if you wanted to make it here, no, I don't think you should have. Tape some there. empty toilet paper roll. Yeah, like, no. Cardboard to your chest. Don't, don't fuck around with TSA, no, man. No. Uh, I'm trying to think the last thing before we get to the Super Bowl. I wanted to ask you out the gate. I went to go get a haircut before we came out here <clears throat> and I did not cut my hair. Are you into the idea of me growing my hair out? Pause. I've been told you that. 
And you was like, it's too much red. It makes you look like. Okay, but here, all right. So I was talking with Tamaris <clears throat> and I was talking with Julian as well. I was always cool with my fade, skin fade, everything with the beard. Now that I'm getting older, within my face and the sleep that I'm losing because of Amara, bags are getting here. I look like a, like for real look like a cop now. Yeah. I kind of looked like a cop before. Yeah. I don't look like a, a cool white person. I look like a fucking cop. Yeah. I think I have to grow this hair out. I mean, I, I, I think it has to happen. Well, you got to be careful because when you grow your hair out, then you can go from looking like a cop to a firefighter. Well, I'm Irish, so I don't, you know. Natural. We're FDM. Yeah. FDM, why? <laughs> through and through. through. <laughs> wow. Like that was our no, n- number one gig as an Irish. Yo, you're either a firefighter yeah. or you work for the telephone company. Yeah, like Irish, like y'all, Irish in New York are like what Jamaicans are in New York. Jamaicans are either nurses, Irish are either fire, like fire to firefighters. Everyone in my family from my dad's generation above was either the telephone company or a firefighter. Yeah. That's the Irish that's way it. to go. That's, that's it. That's all you need to be in firemen are universally loved. Like police officers, they get all this shit. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's a different type of like respect that firefighters yeah. get uh, as above uh, cuz who nobody wants like their house to burn down. 911 like, like, really what's like so, what's, yeah. put what's them up so there. What's so funny about the entire thing is firefighters are just as racist as cops. Oh, oh but they can't percent. really there's no authority to their racism. Yeah, no. They don't shoot people. <laughs> yeah. No. At their peak they were spraying black people with hoses in the 60s. Yeah, that was their that was their get back. That was it. Turn the truck on. Was that firefighters though? No, I think it was the cops stealing I think that their- was the cops with a hose. Give me that fucking hose. I, I don't think that was the firefighters. Yeah, the cops calling the firemen to pull the truck up. Yo, back the truck up. These niggas don't want to leave the park. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully, officer, we're trained to put out fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You want me to spray the no, people? No, today we're putting out niggers. <laughs> That's who we're putting out today, niggers. Yo, stealing. There's like a fucking apartment building burning to the ground. Like, no, 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 fuck nah, that. There's yeah. a few black There's people. A few blacks around the corner congregating, and they're planting <laughs> some shit. Let's and, go disperse. But and again, that's what's weird. If you go to a firehouse, I'm even now. The banter is going to be just as racist as any police station. The only thing is, cops can be racist and keep their job. Matter of fact, they'll get more awards <laughs> and rise up in the ranks. Mm-hmm. If firefighters project their racism at a fire with a black person and don't save them, they lose their job. Mm-hmm. That's why their racism doesn't matter at all. Julian's, They're going to save anybody. Julian's trying to kill a moth with his, his sliver. Oh, I, I watched it. What's wrong with you, man? What am I, I actually thought do? he was about to hit the camera yeah, that's with what, that. Just, just leave, I was very, I was like, just leave the moth alone. Mine, was just, the just, leave, just leave the moth alone. I threaded alone. that like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, just leave him alone. So out the gate, Super Bowl, um, I watched it. At my guy Azad's crib, and I almost texted Julian to say, I wish you would have flown in one day earlier. When I tell you Azad had 15 of Julian's perfect tens. (laughs) Perfect tens. Like he would have been in fucking heaven. If one girl turned him down, he had 14 other chances of his exact replica Mm. of a woman. That's what's up. It was 15. Bad white girls that are shaped exactly the way Julian likes them. Pretty faces. They were all pretty funny. Had great personalities. I was like, Julian would have found three of his wives here. Shaped like six (laughs) o'clock. You know, Julian like he like no 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 no. He like straight up and down. uh, With with that with the second one, where like you know, in the second uh, what's it called? Six oh seven. Like it it has it has a tiny bit of a, a a shape. It's the second hand. No, but you know the one that does it's the second. It's called the second hand. No, it's two hands on a clock. No, those are the minute hands. The second no, hand. No, there's the hour hand. Then there's the, 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 the minute, minute hand. And then the second hand. The one, the small one. But I was takes. saying second out of the two, <laughs> not second. Anyways, yeah. When it gets to five, like it, you know, right. there's a little. It. It's like, yeah, it's cool. It's Britney, man. It's Britney, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's Britney, bitch. What you want from me? Get Rory some knives. <laughs> Demonstrate the time with your knives, Rory. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways. No, they, they, they had shape. Okay. I wouldn't say straight six o'clock. Okay. And even well, Julian's type whites. aren't all six o'clock. Yeah. None of mine are six o'clock. You like well, six o'clock, but you like like a Pilates six o'clock. Yeah. Like they have nice, you know, fam. Nice Roy, they they really work out. That off. They nice. do a lot of squats, so there yeah. is something. Not yeah. only compared to the date that you crashed for me. How were they like comparatively? <clears throat> um, Same bag. She would have done great in that mix. I would say there was a few that were better than her, but she would have done great in that mix. But yeah, they were like her. Okay. I was. We're, I'm gonna text his odd after this. But well, hold on, I'm still. I'm still leaning on some shit that Rail said earlier. Rail said. Rail said I look like Ice Cube. 
Well, and boy, I missed that. And boys in the hood. Because I got an LA hat on. I it's a lot I of like blue. That. It's a lot of blue. I I'm see what sure. you did with the laces. Like, this is a great fit, but. Shout out to Joe Fresh Goods, man. Is this, this like, is this your way of checking in? Like, when this comes out tomorrow, they'll see this and be like, okay, he just, he's blue. He's, he's crip. Bro, I think after a certain age, you don't check in. You check into your hotel. Mm. But that's about it. Where else am I checking in at? I don't go. I go to dinner. I mean, I don't know. My dry snitching because at our live show, uh, a rolling '60s crib knocked out all the people there. Oh well, he was he was coming to the show to support. <laughs> our our, our friend slash security beat the shit out of everybody. He was coming. He was coming to support, man. He was coming to show love. That's all. He they showed love. Know, yeah, no, a lot of love. Little love taps. Well, yeah, th- he did his version of Cameron saying, "I smushed the whole birthday cake in his face." Exactly, I showed him that's mad exactly love. what it was. He that's just did that, but with his fist with his and knuckles. no kick. A fish, a fish sandwich. That was, that's all it was. A fish sandwich. Um, where did you guys watch the Super Bowl? Uh, I was in the house. I was in the crib. Uh, I was unpacking to pack, but um, I stayed in the crib, watched it. Uh, it was one of the best Super Bowls I've seen in a very long time. I'm on your side, and I think <clears throat> you and I are the only people on earth. That game was awful. Off? What? I, I'm on the complete it other side. It got good in the, in the fucking, the last possession of the game was the only time the game got good. No, the, the entire whole, the whole game, game was, was good. It was, it was a tied game pretty much the whole game. It was yeah, defense. but tie wasn't exciting. Nobody, expect, was, nobody expected Brock Purdy to play the way he did. It was a kickoff, like a, a kick out. It was really amazing. Nothing was exciting. Goals. Every drive either had a fumble or a muff punt. or like, That was it, a really good it game, was in, bro. That, that was game, a good game, I was at the edge of my seat the entire time. That was a really good football game. We're the only ones that think that. Like I didn't, I don't, I didn't want to see a forty point Super Bowl. Like I, I didn't did. want to see that. No, you. I I we saw it with Brady it and Mahomes. Just... They won what forty four <clears throat> points or some shit. Yeah, I don't know. I was at my friend's apartment. There was just four of us. We ordered pizza, all that shit. Nothing crazy. Um, so we were all like really actually watching the game, but I, it just wasn't. It, we all agreed. I liked the game support. because I knew. I knew what was going to happen was going to happen. I know I sound like LeBron right there, but I did I did know that that was going to happen because Pat Mahomes, he made a mistake early. He threw his first interception ever in a Super Bowl or postseason, maybe. I knew it was his first interception, which I thought was a crazy stat for the amount of fucking postseason games he's played in. So when I saw that, I knew that all uh, Kansas City had to do was keep it close for Mahomes to win it for them. And once I saw the game was tied, I was like, there's no way Mahomes is not winning this game. I will say San Francisco, shocking enough to me, outplayed them the entire game, in yes. my opinion. Like their, it, their defense is the, incredible. I felt like an asshole because we were, you know, we're making bets and everything. And there was a lot of people at the crib. And I was like, I don't think this is gonna be as close as y'all think it's gonna be. I actually think Kansas City is gonna blow them the fuck out. Yeah. And everybody San that. Francisco was clearly the better team the entire fucking game. Yes. But we also kept saying on some LeBron shit, that's still Pat Mahomes. Still Pat Mahomes. still Pat Mahomes. Still Patrick Ewan. Same shit I was saying with uh, Patriots versus Atlanta that year. They still got Tom Brady. Yeah. It's 28-3, but they still have Tom Brady. Yeah. And even though every single drive, I felt like San Francisco was the better team on both sides of the ball, you still have Patrick Mahomes. So they, they took Kelsey... All the way out of that fucking game. I think Whatever. Kansas City. I think Kansas City thought that San Francisco was going to lay down. Not and even a little I bit. I think once they saw that San Francisco was there to actually win the game, you know, the defense was a little shaken up. They made some mistakes. Uh, Pat Mahomes, you know, threw an interception, things like that. Uh, Travis Kelsey didn't play that well. He I don't know if it's a Travis Kelsey. What thing? I, mean, I, I just I think I don't know who the defensive coordinator. They did coordinator a great job. For, they did a great, great job covering them. They, yeah, they, they they tripled them there yeah, every time. They did a great they did a great job uh, restricting Mahomes on the scramble. Yeah, I was listening. I mean, it was great because there were so few of us. We really got to listen to telecast, and it was Tony Romo. Yeah, so like it's an educational moment. It's every a quarterback. Time. Yeah, yeah, he it's... taught me so much. He was like, "Watch what they do. They'll tease him to the out, and then turn the defense will come around and turn him to go back inside and force him to stay in the pocket." Yeah, That's exactly what they did. Yeah, it was quickly, really good. Really quick side note: This isn't really a topic on our list, but. With Brady going to Fox next year, I believe. Wasn't mm-hmm. that announced? Yeah. You just had a bag. <sighs> Tony, I never liked Tony Romo, but I just hate the Cowboys, so it is what it is. I love Tony Romo now as an announcer. Mm-hmm. Is Brady going to get him out the paint once he starts with Fox? No. I think Brady is going to be <clears throat> better than him at that entire thing. Ah. I, think- like, I, I think Brady, the way we... Romo changed that whole announcing thing from his quarterback brain and smokes it every time. Brady is that times 10. 
Oh yeah, this is so this is, is Michael he, Jordan reporting from the sideline now. Yes. Two different things. How? Yeah, two different skills. Being able this is the same way in which someone can be excellent at a position or or a skill, but it doesn't mean necessarily mean they're a good teacher at that thing. You doesn't necessarily mean you can communicate it better than someone else. Uh, teaching versus doing something I hear what you're saying, but I think things. I think the fact that we get to now how you just said Tony Romo breaks down the quarterback. Yeah, he's an what, educator. You can hear yeah, it in his uh, tone. He's very like. I think, okay. I think Tom Brady is that as well. Tom Brady could, also could, made. I just think that he never got a chance to show us that side of him, though. Like that that side of his personality. And no disrespect to uh, Julian Edelman or Dan, Danny Amendola. <laughs> he made a, a bunch of five, seven, 100 pound white guys pro bowlers. Yeah. he's. I think he's a pretty good fucking teacher. Yeah, but no. that's not, that's, that <laughs> that's, doesn't apply to my argument. Okay, did you see, and I know people hate when I bring up uh, Valuetainment and Pat, Bev, and all of them. Did you see his interview with him? Brady is I did. I'm sure destined for the microphone. He articulated himself through that interview. I was like, this is a, a star in the making as far as a personality. Like, yeah, no, Brady for sure. Is, for sure. He's going to be a solid. He's going to be a star they on the gave him 375 million. As the, it's Tom yeah. Brady. Just, I mean, just having the uh, the mind of the greatest, arguably the greatest football player ever, definitely the greatest quarterback ever. Yeah. Um, just having his mind and having him, you know, be able to do exactly like you said what Tony Romo does and can like articulate what the quarterback is seeing, what he's feeling out there, um, what the defense is doing. Just having that that guy on the sideline now and having him reporting. I think that it's, it's you know it's going to make the experience of watching a game yeah much better. Like if Michael Jordan was doing and play by play, re- you know, rest in rest in peace for so many reasons. I felt that was going to be Kobe's lane oh, eventually as well. 100%. Like yeah, Kobe doing that for the NBA would have been incredible, insane. Yeah, those are the type of guys you want on the sidelines. The guys that played, <laughs> excuse me, and won at the highest level. I mean and. The legends, just being able to hear a legend dissect the game weekly is, <laughs> yeah. is insane. I mean, we have it now with, you know, a lot of the guys that do it, but a lot of them were before our, like, generation. Like, I mean, you know, we got uh, Tim Bradshaw, those guys, uh, Boomer Sison, and, you know, like, I was a kid when Boomer Sison played, but I'm Brady good. is the, that's what I'm seeing, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Brady was the guy. And also, it's a different... Uh, <laughs> Just as far as the, I guess that's considered the media space to some degree. It's a whole different world now. That's why Tony Rome was so great. Because before they would have never allowed that type of shit. Because right. people just mm-hmm. wanted someone to say, first and 10, mm-hmm. it's passed this way. Like people as fans and listeners want more out of the people that are talking. Right. So I feel like even the, the older legends that we did listen to could have gotten that bag, but the space wasn't like that. Yeah. Now I think... Brady's not going to shut the fuck up, and I'm fine with that. Well, Even like Eli and Peyton have a great <laughs> yeah. show. Yeah, I enjoy that too. I, yeah. I can see how it could be a little distracting because they're like podcasting during a yeah. game, but I think it's great. Yeah, like, no, I, I think it's it. dope. I think it's cool. It's funny you mentioned that. Like after, because there was after the game was over, Romo was asking the replay team to like play the final play back and still giving defensive breakdowns and offensive schemes. They're like clearing out the field, bringing out the confetti, and Romo's like, let's look at it one more time. They're like, bro, the game's bent over. Yeah. Like, that's how much he cares about that shit. It was really funny. So. <laughs> it was a great game. Shout out to the uh, to the Chiefs on another championship. Shout out to Pat Mahomes. Uh, I mean, what he did last night in the second half and in overtime, like, he just never looked, like, phased. He wasn't rushed. He wasn't anxious. He was just like, Yo, this is what I do. I'm just at the I'm just at the park playing football, and I know we're gonna get get in field goal range, make this field goal, go into overtime, and win the game. How How did you guys feel about Travis Kelsey's "Let me speak to the representative" <coughs> moment with Andy Reid on the sidelines? And for those that don't know, I'm sure nah, people watch the game, but he started he he he, was, he bumped the fuck out of him and was screaming in his I face. I feel him though. I mean, I understand uh, that's that's just competitiveness. That's 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 just a great player and a great coach. Uh, knowing that this is for this is for another championship. That was on the fumble. Yeah, play, this is this is benched. for this is for the championship. Like I, we need to whatever the fuck we got to do to fix this and and win this game. Let's fucking do it. They, they said the side he went to where the fumble <coughs> occurred was the side Kelsey would have been on. It would have been his blocking side. So he was very animated about not being yeah. on the field for that. That's moment. just competitive shit. Like I, I, a lot of people was like, "Oh, that's fucked up." He bumped his coach like that. He. 
I'm like, bro, if you don't understand that, first of all, these guys love each other, but then they are in the midst of the another of one of the biggest games of their lives, and they want this championship. They do not want to okay, lose but, this ring. But even like with, I feel y'all. I get the competitiveness, and and I said on here, I think Travis Kelsey's probably the best tight end that's ever lived. Mm-hmm. Are you adding too much emotions into this, and now making it a thing and a distraction? Yell it, yell at your coach, like yo, put me in whatever. Like bumping into somebody, now we're putting things in a way different space. <clears throat> not to say Andy Reid would not focus on the Super Bowl, but anytime any human I think is bumped, especially in a tense situation, they're gonna get into regular human mode of like, what the fuck are you doing right now? Yeah. And not even listen to the real conversation that we're about to have. Ye- yell in his face. I don't give a fuck. Right. But like the moment you Andy Reid's sitting there trying to look at his fucking playbook and you got Travis Kelsey with pads on bumping him. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think I, mean, I think it was a bit of a, a mistake. Too. Like I understand emotion and competitiveness, but you're supposed to be a leader on that team. You need to control some of that for the betterment of what's going on. You could be right and scream, but why are you doing that? I mean, it's again, I I understand it. Uh Travis was pretty much locked up all night. Um maybe he's yelling to to try some different play schemes. Yeah. To get it get open so he can get the ball. I don't know. I mean, I just know that in that moment, everybody on that sideline wanted to win because they won before. Um the, the funniest meme I saw of, of him screaming at Andy Reid was, yo, my fucking girl is here. Give me the ball. Yeah. <laughs> my, my bitch is here. <laughs> yo, yo, my bitch is in the stands. You're gonna have me looking crazy to her. Well, they, <sighs> they addressed the moment after the game and asked Kelsey about it. And he said, I was telling him how much I loved him. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great response. Yeah. And then, you know, Naturally. they had the professional lip reader step in. One guy said, it looks like he said, keep me in, you fucker. I'm calm now. And then another guy said, it looks like he said, hey, come on, you fucker, put me on. So, which warranted either, in that either, either or. He wants to be in the game because yeah. he wants to help his team win. And like you said, Rory, he is arguably the greatest tight end ever. He wants to be on the field. So, I understand that in a moment. But it was a great game. Shout out to the Chiefs. Shout out to the 49ers. I think they'll be right back again. Mm-hmm. Uh, next couple years, they'll get another shot at it. I just think uh, it's Pat Mahomes' league, obviously. In how old is how old is Pat Mahomes? Twenty eight. Twenty eight years old. Four, three rings. Three, uh, five. S- he has not. He's six. He's never missed the uh, AFC Championship game. Tw- mm. Twenty eight years old with that many rings. That's the lowest he's gone is AFC Championship. Sick. They just gave him 500 M's, what, three years ago? Four years ago? Should. As I've said, he's about to get it's another coming. 500. He's flirting with these Brady legacy real early in his career. He's oh, no, he's, the he's, he's doing tizzy. more than flirting with it. No, it's going to send the whites into a tizzy, man. He is going yeah, to. He's, oh, he's, wait. All right. See, I'm, gonna, I'm on y'all's side, but but I will just, <clears> I'll argue the other side purposely right now. No, nah, because you got three, three rings and he's. I'm, it, playing with someone that has seven comparatively at this time i'm not I know, saying that's why, that's why i said he's 28 years old it's crazy that he has three at 28 years old comparatively at this phase in his career Who has seven rings tom brady has seven rings over 20 years mahomes is what he's been at 10 super bowls six years in and he's has three he's batting 50 percent with rings uh, listen bro he's he's setting himself he's on he's on pace I, he's, he's way on, ahead of pace. He's on. He's okay. on. He's on. on pace. Like okay. if he stays healthy for the next five years, I think he's gonna get there another three times at least in the next five years. Okay, but <clears throat> how long? All right. See, this is why I go on the other side because I do agree with y'all. I, I'm I'm team Pat Mahomes, and I think there's a huge possibility that he can teeter with what Brady has done. Yeah. How long is Andy Reid gonna want to be a coach? As long as he keeps They've running. already broken up the team a few times with the Chiefs, and that's why I think Pat is great, because they still come back. And well, they thought Travis was going to retire. He made that clear last night that he's not. No. That was going to be my next point. <laughs> a lot of the younger players, which I respect and love, I think Marshawn Lynch was probably one of the first people to set that precedent outside of Barry Sanders, of course, but retiring a little early so I don't ruin my fucking life forever. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you could be brain dead damn near when you're 35, if you stay in the league from 21 to 35 years old. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of players are retiring early. Mm -hmm. And I could also see Pat Mahomes. No. Not when you're flirting with history of of this level. But I'm saying if you're not in the right situation. We can't guarantee that the Chiefs will always be in the right situation, that Pat Mahomes will feel like, I need to possibly ruin... 
Because that's what's so crazy about football. Retiring in your 30s is common. Yeah. You're, thir- you're, you're very young for Earth. Yeah. I'm not maybe going to ruin my entire life if the situation is not good. Maybe my coach is gone at this point. Brady stayed in a great situation for so long and was about to retire. And then Tampa gave him a great situation. Mm-hmm. They got a bunch of weapons, everything he needed, and was like, I'll give it two, I'll give it two three more years. Mm-hmm. If Pat's not in that situation, I could see him retiring and not getting to seven Super Bowls. Like, that's not an easy fucking foot to do. Well, I mean, he's, again, he's already halfway there. He's only 20, what, six? 28. 28. Say he has another. He's three and one in the Super Bowl. Yeah. In six years, he's been to four. That's insane. He's a three time Super Bowl champion, three time MVP, two time uh, NFL MVP, like NFL Offensive Player of the Year. Like he's. It's Listen, there. I'm, I'm, on, but I'm, I'm on board. Like, he's, he's definitely the guy that, you know, just as a sports fan looking at the game. You can tell that, oh, no, he's going to dominate the league for a very long time. Yeah. I don't doubt that at all, but I will say we're talking about someone with three Super Bowls that's competing with someone that has seven. Over the course of 20 years. <clears throat> yeah. He still Give got time. time. Got I'm a lot of time. At this point in his career, Again, it's there. If it's he stays healthy, you know, things like that. Now, it's a lot to factor in, but he's already in that conversation of, okay, this is his league. Every team is going to have to go through Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs uh, to win a Super Bowl, obviously. Um, And again, as long as they just keep putting, you know, some athletic guys around him and just letting him, you know, pick the field apart, I think he's going to be in the Super Bowl again. Because this was a down year for them. (coughs) Definitely was. They weren't nearly as good as they were in the past couple of years. Right. Um, And I mean, of course, we're not the sports podcast, so. I'll also ask you guys, did you participate in the Twitter challenge of any time they showed Taylor Swift take a shot? No. No. I didn't participate either, but people in the house were trying to do that. And at that point, I was like, I guess I, I'm going to have to drive, gonna say, I'm gonna have to drive a bunch of people I would have done it. <laughs> yeah, no. I can't. Somebody <laughs> that's else. A sick, that's a sick piece with that company. For sure. I tell what it is. Um, Double shot. There was another thing going around I saw. They were like... uh. People were trying to guess which song Usher was going to open with. Okay. So everybody was had their picks and it was like, all right, if it's not the song that you picked, everybody got a drink. I think the entire country had a drink. Nobody thought Usher was going to start his Super Bowl halftime performance with Caught Up. Which was the best move ever because I was on the yeah or oh my God side. Mm-hmm. I was thinking out the gate for the whites like, right. to keep them locked in like, oh, okay, this is the first one. Maybe I won't change the channel. Mm-hmm. Caught up was the perfect start. Yeah. Am, am I crazy to say it, this was one of the best Super Bowl halftime shows um, in, <clears throat> in at least this was 20 years? I loved it. Damn. You said this was the best one in 20 years? Damn. This is, so this is better than Beyonce, better than... Beyonce and Bruno Mars was, was <clears throat> great. Don't get me wrong. I just think how much they put into it. Wait, Beyonce didn't busy- have her own show yet? Um, I think it was Beyonce, she no, didn't Bruno do Mars, Hattie and Maroon 5, right? Yeah. It was, it was, she did that, and then she did it again with Coldplay. Gotcha. Coldplay, that's okay. what I was thinking of. Um, Does, do we think she gets it next year? And I, I also, you know, I think the, the Dr. Dre one was really good, but I think... <laughs> Bias wise, I thought that was really good. I'm talking, I'm trying to be objective in this entire thing. Yeah. I could see that not being ranked on the list because that was very much like core fan base shit if we're getting down to Super Bowl performances. Yeah. Watching fucking Dr. Dre Snoop, yeah. Kendrick, and like that's that we like it, but mm-hmm. I don't know if the whole world did. Mm-hmm. Quick correction. That one was, she did 2013 alone, Beyonce. I, okay. I knew she did. And it she alone. popped out on the other ones as well. But she, 2013 yeah, was her I, year. Beyonce had to have had a Super Bowl halftime show already. Like, I feel like I remember seeing she had the whole field. It was like, uh, it was her set in like, New Orleans. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, no, the one she did with Bruno was when everyone was mad at her uh, because they said she dressed like Malcolm X. And I was like, I've never seen Malcolm X's ass before. So yeah. I don't know what y'all talking People about. People just be talking. <laughs> People just. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was the outrage the next day. Like, how could Beyonce dress as. And then, you know, they went People through Malcolm X's away, history man. and shit. I'm like, I've never seen Malcolm X ass. So only, I don't know only what you're in talking a suit. about. Oh, Malcolm was only in a suit. <laughs> never seen Malcolm in jeans in my life. <laughs> I've never seen this. But whatever. Um, 
Yeah, no, I know I'm getting gassed up and actually contradicting myself <coughs> about the whole Pat Mahomes legacy thing. And I'm living in the moment with this Usher performance. But yeah, I think it's up there for the last 20 years. No, as he, far as it's... performances go, the entire thing, there was not one wasted moment. Every single thing yeah. had a purpose. Like, yeah, it but was what year was Prince? Prince? 2007. Prince still has the greatest Super Bowl. That is the greatest. That was 07? Yeah. yeah. That's still the greatest ever. That you know, was, you guys uh, know in the I'm, rain in I'm, Miami. <laughs> I'm rain man. It with rain dates. during purple rain. Are you fucking kidding me? That was it. <laughs> like, like you can't, you can't. And plan the lights that. were purple. The rain looked purple. You can't plan that. But it's what is it? 2024. Yeah, it's yeah. still within 20 years. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. No, I, I actually didn't realize it was 2007 though. I, I'm usually rain man with dates. <coughs> I, w- I would have thought that was like 04. That no. That happened. Yeah, you said 20 years. So I'm like, whoa. We got oh, yeah, 20 years. Well, 04. Speaking of 04, that was the Janet Jackson Timberlake year. Yep. Titty gate. Titty gate. So. 20 years, I think I'm still. It's definitely up there. It's top. It's top. In the last 20 years, it's top three for sure. And we, well, here's the thing. We never even talk about the Janet Justin performance as if it was just a performance. We talk about the titty. Yeah. Well, that's the show. When was the last time y'all went back and watched to see if it was really a good performance? Because I haven't in a long time. Yeah, I just went back and saw the titty. Well, I went back and watched it, and I'm on. So, how could we rank it? I'm talking about performances, not like moments that because I, Janet Jackson. I told you, I'm doing this thing now where I'm going back and looking at all the whites that we call great, and I'm just like looking at their performances. It was cool, like the Justin shit was cool, but uh, Insula, I'm with you, but <laughs> but it's it's only because y'all. Well, Rory said that Justin and Usher. Would be a better versus than 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 Usher and Chris. Yes, no, we're not doing. This I did. I'm, no not, I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing after, again. No, I'm, I'm just saying again. after not that doing performance it again. last night, Chris deserves the next Super Bowl. He definitely does. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Why not? I think everything just proved Usher. Usher set the precedent of how this shit goes. But wait, wait, wait. But why do you think Chris oh, Brown doesn't geez. deserve the next one or the next out of the probably next three years? <clears throat> I knew this question was going to come up, and I thought about it. In my, in my crib Good. of how I was going to go about, because we were joking in the group chat during the show, and I was like, I know Maul's actually going to really want to have this conversation. I'm fine to have it. And I'm tired of looking, I mean, like, I'm not- tired of looking <laughs> like the guy that just hates on Chris Brown when I actually really like Chris Brown. I think in 15 years or 10 years, let's do 10 years, Chris Brown would make sense for the Super Bowl. In 15 Next years? Next year, Chris Brown... Is not at the relevancy for the whole fucking world at this point, <clears throat> based off the music he's putting out right now. He I has think one of the biggest I think songs once in the world becomes, right now. Once he becomes a real legacy act, nope. he will be perfect. The way Usher Sensational with DeVito? Or David, I always say his name. It's DeVito. Right? DeVito. DeVito, right? Yeah, DeVito. It's one of the biggest records in the world right now. Cool. That's never gotten someone a Super Bowl performance. <clears throat> I'm not saying it did. I think he'll need to do it as a legacy act. That's what that's, Rory's saying. I'm trying to say the way Usher got it is now. Is Usher not doing the, his legacy act That's now? what we're saying. Yeah. And I'm saying it makes sense. Usher made sense now because he is a legacy act he, doing the Vegas legacy shit. Mm-hmm. I'm actually kind of complimenting Chris Brown that he's too active right now mm-hmm. to do it. It will make sense when he. I mean, is, Bruno is, got one. He's not a layout. He's not a. That wasn't way, his legacy. Bruno, way a different, different. Way different. different lane. Lane. <clears throat> What's the lane? That's pop. The whites. Chris, Chris Brown's White. not pop. No. Okay. Bruno was. <laughs> Bruno was. I'm not here to argue. Relevant, like at that moment, was the biggest artist in the world. It was twenty pop music. Magic. Like at, it was undeniable. I'm saying if Chris did that right now, of course Chris would make sense for the Super Bowl. But he's making niche music for a certain crowd and it's not the whole world so in 10 years he should get his flowers and do a super bowl yeah it makes no sense now zero sense. like maul he's not gonna leapfrog the previous high that he had 15 years ago it's never gonna he's not gonna become that level again of like superstardom so he, now he's in the phase of put out music or like become a little less active wait and then it becomes the reminiscing, like Usher's set was a reminiscent, like, go through it. Caught up, you don't have to call, superstar, love yeah. in the club. Uh, Alicia came out, did Ain't Got You, they did my boo, confessions, nice and slow, burn, bad girl, you got it bad. Oh he my dropped God. The, he dropped the ball on bad girl. I feel like Usher, that was his moment. He should have had Kayla come out. Uh, then turned down for what? And yeah. How gangster would that have been, Rory? I saw it. How gangster would that have been? I'm not, oh, saying, I'm not wow. saying you're stealing, I'm not, I can't speak. I'm not saying you're stealing tweets. Was it Diani? Someone tweeted that like 
really a week ago and i favored it and was like oh that would be the craziest that would have been let me yo fam let me tell you something but here, chiefs lose if that happens there's no way there's no way travis and them in the locker room know that kayla's on stage for bad girl with usher and they come out and win the second half and for those that don't know uh, no fucking way for those that don't know kayla friend of the show is travis's ex before taylor I think that would and have been. And she's bad. Uh, she's yeah. gorgeous. That would have been. I don't know why he didn't do it. Ooh, that would have been gangster. Is there a relationship like, why, there? Like, it don't why, need no, to be. Not at all. Yo, okay, why would Usher to... choose to take a shot at the Chiefs and Travis Kelly? I'm just saying, like, what it's not. Was it's the... not so much a shot. It's it's it's, it's kind of it's kind of like a, you know, That's like a shot. no, no, no. It's kind of like yo, you know, everybody kind of trying to write you off because Taylor's obviously the, one of the biggest stars in the world, and your ex is with her now, and it's. But when y'all were a couple. Y'all, y'all had social media in a frenzy. Everybody was posting y'all. Yeah. Like now everybody's kind of like forgetting y'all. Even the commentator last night when they Travis and, and Taylor was walking off, he said, look at that couple. Like you could tell they're in, they're in love. Like, bro, they've been dating four months. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, come on, I get it. It's Taylor Swift. I know what it does. It I brings mean, her audience to the Super Bowl. But in my opinion, know. they're just kissing cousins. I don't even think like. Yeah, like I get it. I get it. Someone tweeted it was like uh, Taylor just discovered football. Has been a fan for four months. Meanwhile, I've been a lifelong fan for twenty years. My team never won shit. She's been a fan for ten seconds and won a Super Bowl. It's insane. Poor Ice Spice didn't know. Then she didn't, didn't know a damn. She didn't thing. know that. She didn't know exactly what was happening. She didn't know exactly didn't how know big that single that thing. last drive was. She did, she had no idea. Like she was in the stadium for like a legendary performance. She has no idea. Like they just did vibes. You know, I think, I think probably box. at one point during the Usher performance, looked at him and was like, "Oh, I know this one." Yeah, yeah. Like I, I mean, that's on, sick. just I think yeah, out of one out of one song out of the whole set, I'm sure Ice Spice was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I know this one." Yeah. Yes, I it mean, was, but yeah. why not? It was definitely yeah. It was probably yeah. everybody knows yeah. Yeah, it's the, um, that's the that's the White's great greatest hit. I do need to apologize and say I was wrong. Uh, not not to name I don't know if it's a name drop, but I went to. Dinner with Elliot Wilson on Friday, and we were discussing that I he thinks I'm crazy for saying the clock is on with Ice Spice. You are. And I said, I know that sounds insane, but even look how they handled her with the Grammy. She's not Taylor's bestie anymore. And I, I said some of that on this pod. So I either want to apologize or take some credit that someone listened to me and made sure that Taylor and Ice Spice were best friends again. No, you got to apologize. They were always I'm sorry. Still, they I'm, were, sorry. They I'm were, sorry. I'm sorry. They were always still cool. <laughs> yeah. They just weren't together every day. Well, I have an ego cool. sometimes. No, I get it. it, it I'm happens. here to apologize. I, I still stand by a lot of my theories with the clock being on. I, I think it's great that they walked in the Super Bowl together. I think She's all eyes were on her. But <laughs> if it's going to take those moments to continue it on, I, again, don't know how long it's going to last. I think it's going to be. It's going to last a while. I'm with you. I understand why you think the clock is on, but it's not on yet. It's not on. Yeah. Speaking of friends, uh, Alicia and uh, Usher, outside of his great performance, that was the moment that- uh, Alicia looked great. That the, the, that incredible. that deep embrace that they had at the end there. Well, I mean, you know, it's just a little, you know. We, in front of millions of people, Ma, how would you take that if that was your queen? I mean, listen, man. First of all, you letting her go up there with- Usher for his halftime Super Bowl show. You got you to gotta understand <laughs> which, what's coming with that. Which his whole theme for the last year is ruining marriages. Yeah, and you know what song, you know what song they're getting ready to perform together. My boo, Literally, fact, my and, boo. They only yo, have one song you, together. If y'all remember the My Boo video, which yeah. was a phenomenal video, yeah. it ends with them as like kids in, in a Polaroid Square. picture yeah, of like, yeah, but they, no, they, this they was meet my in first Times kiss. Square. Yeah, they meet in Times Square and just like happen to be in the city at the same time and just start dancing in the middle of Times Square like, and like, then you got, you, the, you got the Polaroid of them when they were young as fuck. Like, <clears throat> it's a lot of it's history. history. That All right. This is how I put it. If you're dating someone that's a performer, you got to hold it down. And when your girl has to go perform, she's got to perform. It's a performance. Well, go perform with somebody you don't know that you haven't known since she was 12. Yeah. It's a little... That's a history now. I can't even... It's a history. It's a lot of inside <laughs> jokes there. It's a lot of intimate moments there. Yeah, like you giggling with him. Yeah. It's like, what y'all laughing at? Because I wasn't there. So now I'm on the outside of an inside joke with my girl and some some handsome R&B singer. Like, you know, I don't like yeah. that. I just don't like that. If yeah, I'm Swiss, if I'm Swiss, you know, it's just like, I'm in the house just slamming shit today. Like, But this, this is where I no play... reason. Just slamming doors and shit. Like, this is where I play it. the other side. 
<clears throat> Swizz did the right thing the way he reacted in his caption. He didn't go. He had to. He didn't go. Well, he watched. Swi we know you can't, Swiz, bro. We know Swizz is smart and studies the game. He watched what happened when Kiki Palmer's uh, man went. Right. He jumped out the window. Right. And went crazy. Yeah. Even if people feel like he was right, he made himself look nuts and insecure. Right. The only way Swizz could have reacted to that was, that's a performer. They're performing. Yeah. Love. He said, y'all paying attention to the wrong it. thing. Y'all didn't see that big ass dress that was yeah. the size he of the said, stadium. Uh, yeah. Yep. Y'all talking about the wrong damn thing. Y'all don't see that amazing dress covering the entire stadium. Yeah. Eye popping, glittering red, Dolce & Gabbana, all that shit. That's no, cool. Alicia looked great. When she stood up and started walking, I was like, oh, yeah, no, shit. Incredible. shit. Like, I didn't. Well, fuck that. How would you guys react? You got to react the same way Swiss did. I'm, I'm conf Oh, no. Of Privately, how would you react? <laughs> I wouldn't actually, I actually wouldn't have said oh, anything. Oh, privately? Period. Privately. Oh, I'm on Usher's, I'm on his head in my house with my girl. Like, okay, but, it, what, but what, are time? you fucking that nigga? Like, you got to go in. You got to, like. <laughs> Yo, you fucked him? Tell me. Just tell me. Why you guys I ain't going to be now? mad. Yeah, you just tell me. Like, y'all fucked even, before? You don't even skate. Yeah, like, I know that, I know that, that embrace from the back. I do that with all the chicks I used to fuck, but we just friends now. Like, you know what I think the uh, male version of, like, you know when girls say just, Tell me the truth, I won't be mad. Just tell me the truth. Yeah. I think the male version of that is like, yo, the past is the past. I don't give a fuck. I just yeah, gotta yeah. know. Did you fuck him? Yeah, just tell me. Cause I'm thinking about doing but, those couple songs no, on the I night. don't think the past is the past. Yeah, I'm just no, saying no. that so yeah, I can I get the truth know. out of you. I wanna know. <laughs> this is Usher though. You kinda gotta and it's fucked up because you what you gonna you kinda gotta just take that. You gotta accept that. Well, yeah, I mean they've known each other since they were, they were young. But What's wrong with that? Yeah, but started when we were younger. Yeah, but still, though, that 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 back hug from the back. Don't hug my wife in the back. Don't you don't do that. think that was a moment of you could do your little moonwalk well, and shit like, like that, but don't hug my girl from the back. We don't do that. We, I mean, we don't know, no, obviously, but we kind of know that Swizz and Alicia, how close they are outside of marriage. Like they're actually one of the few couples that I think are like for real love each other in these they're, industry they're, couple they're goal friends, shit. They're like yeah, like they're, sure. yeah, they're really fuck with a team. Other. Yeah. Swizz had to have been there for all rehearsals. Yeah. So like you think it was new choreography? Oh, he freestyled that. Like the way we were talking yeah. about the last episode when Chappelle did a different monologue oh, yeah. during yeah, yeah, yeah. dress rehearsals and Usher then when they went give, live. You think you could tell by the way Alicia, the back hug was in the You could tell by the way Alicia <laughs> smiled. Like she she that, that was that was he, he just freestyled that. That was an ad lib. Alicia smiled too hard, like, yo. And he put that white glittery glove on her. Come on. Oh, it, come on, man. It, it was, was because of the was all Sweating and you know? shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was you know, it was the pearls. Yeah, yeah. You gotta put glitter on glitter. That red with that white glitter, you gotta do that. But how do you how else do you perform a record called My Boo? Like you're choreography wise. Nah, hit how else back. do you do it? That yeah. would look weird if you're like Swiss say, you gotta stay in your zone, zone, <laughs> zone, zone, nigga. Back the fuck up on my wife. Like that. <laughs> stay out of her zone. Go moonwalk on it's a this is a big fucking stage. Go moonwalk on that <laughs> side of the fucking on a stage. football field. Yeah, yeah, like go down there, go to the 30 yard line, my nigga. Don't be getting right behind my okay, wife. Okay, but like if that. if you're sliding through Will I Am's legs that was on nasty. a song didn't that like didn't that. require that it. I didn't like that. Usher ain't never made a song that made me want to slide between a nigga legs <laughs> like that. What song was that? That was Oh My God, right? Oh my yeah. god. I never liked that. That song. was Oh My God moment. See, I never liked that song. There's, that not, there's not a Single, mo unless I was. You think he freestyled that? Unless I was sliding into home plate, I can't think of any time I'd slide through a man's legs. Yeah, what was Usher doing right there? But that if you, shit was nasty. If you're doing that on that choreography, if my boo comes on, I, yeah, you gotta now. You, I have to touch her. Yeah. I just slid I just through the, Will I Am's legs. She kind of, she kind of botched that note. So do you think it was she did, like? A, but which is like, I mean, it's Alicia Keys. But like, I'm saying, like, do you think that's a moment of like, <laughs> I got you? Like he was doing it in a moment, like I'm, I, you're still. Here, you, you stumbled. Let me catch you. Let me hold you. Yeah, I let got me hold you. you up. I got you. But yeah, guys, but if but I'm Swiss, me, like, let my queen fall. Yeah. No, to me, that's <laughs> actually more <laughs> offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more yeah, offensive. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, I'm gonna talk. Fall. I'm gonna talk to her. Yeah, after. I got this after the after the show. We're, I got we'll this. do trust falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't we not doing that? Don't you can't get behind my wife like that. Hell no. Fuck nah. That was too. That was a little too. Come on, fam. Okay. Let me add a whole new scenario into this. This is actually why I wish Damaris was here, because I'd like to hear the women's perspective. Swizz and Alicia went viral when they were on vacation with Swizz's ex-wife and they was all laying on the beach together. Mm. Swizz has gotten off a lot of stuff where Alicia's been mm. understanding. You know, I know he got yeah. kids and like yeah, they want to do family yeah, yeah, vacation, yeah, yeah. the yeah. mom got to come. I actually understand all that. I'm not I think that's actually beautiful they did it. Yeah. But if you if you're able to get that shit off, 
Mm. And your girl is cool laying on a beach with your ex. During a Super Bowl performance, maybe Usher can nah, give my girl a back hug. Nah, because that, that there was, has to be some balance. That was in private. We was on the beach. That was private. This is the that biggest shit stage. hit every tabloid this, on earth. Yeah, but this is the <laughs> biggest stage in the world right now. This yeah, is but, the Super Bowl halftime show. People that don't watch football is watching this. I hope y'all don't take this the, the wrong way because Swizz is a legend. I, how many people do y'all think that watch that know that Alicia Keys is married to Swizz Beats? Oh, so, like in, in that in that people. point of view, like I mean, if you know Alicia Keys, you know who she's married to. People know so. all people know Alicia Keys. They, they you think if somebody know doesn't know who Alicia Keys, you think somebody that knows Alicia Keys and who she is doesn't know who she's married to? You know, Usher's married. I found that out today. Yeah, never knew that. No, you just, see. No, but I, I mean, I knew he he was married before this too, though. I don't know. I didn't know he just got married. I'm saying, today. I know that's my my mom theory when it comes to this type of stuff. My mom loves Alicia Keys music. You don't loves know everything about it. She has no fucking. I'm sure my mom knows that Alicia Keys is married, but if I asked who's Alicia Keys married to, she would not have the answer of his name. She'd probably just go, "I know she's married," but she, she wouldn't be like, "Oh, you know, the guy that made stop." Drop roll with DMX. You got your mom's fucked up. Your mom's will be like, Showtime. She'll know exactly who Swiss is. <laughs> She'll fuck Rory up with that. <laughs> yo, your mom scream out Showtime if you ask her, yo, who Alicia Keys married to? <laughs> That's sick. That's... <laughs> your mom's yelling Showtime is crazy. <laughs> Because here's the thing, uh, my mind would start to wander and wonder, I wouldn't even put that with Swiss Beats. Now I'd wonder what- Yeah, like, how, you, <laughs> how you know that's his ad lib? How you what, know that's his tag? What black dude fucked you and said, Showtime at that put you on the show I wouldn't time. think she would put that with, with Swiss. I think my mom just fucked some black dude that- From Yonkers too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when she was at Mount St. Vincent, just he was blowing it, blowing her back out and yelled, Showtime. <laughs> that is That's sick. what I would think. I wouldn't think she was a Swiss fan. Oh, man, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, man, I was hoping Usher brought Kayla out. I ain't going to lie, man. Kayla, I, th Kayla, I don't think would do it because I think she's for her, own, for her own mental got, health. What? The she Super Bowl? Wanna, Get the fuck. First of all, she's a model. So Usher would just need a model in that moment. Oh, no, that's why I think it would work because you he had a bunch of models. Like Kayla being the one would be like one of those subtle Easter eggs that would eventually go viral. I don't know why viral. you guys are focused on this thing as if the Usher was against the Chiefs. Like, no, it's not about being against the Chiefs. It's just knowing that, obviously, okay, Taylor Swift is in the building. You don't think there's also a pressure from the NFL? You have to be neutral? <clears throat> no, I, th I think there was probably no. pressure from Usher saying, hey, this is my Super Bowl performance. Do not cut to Taylor Swift dancing to my music 70 times. Yeah. And I'm just bringing out a bad girl. She's a, she's a model. So it just she just happens to be the ex of somebody that's playing in the game tonight. And if you're already the petty guy, like with your residency, down to the Alicia Keys back hug. Yeah, that let me stir up some. Usher has been doing nothing but <laughs> stirring up relationships and ex relationships. Yeah, man. Gotta go throw all, Kayla in that shit. Go in that all mix. the way. <laughs> Fuck it. Bring Kayla out there. Let her walk her beautiful ass up and down. You know what I mean? And have Travis in that locker room slamming his helmet against the fucking wall. Because there was plenty of just models that weren't even danced. That were just there. Yeah, exactly. You got like you got to just have Kayla walk. That it could be fire. a two second thing. That would have been fire. That's like cultural shit. That's like you know what I mean. Like dude, this is for social media. Wink, wink. Like here, y'all can have fun with this tonight. You know how crazy that would have went on social media. No, I I get it. And, I get it would have been that, a moment. If I'm usher from a business standpoint, the way <laughs> Taylor Swift has just been added into the NFL at this point. Yeah. You don't think that there would be a million think pieces tweets like once that all adds up that that's Taylor's boyfriend's ex that came out in Usher's performance. Ooh. Now everyone's going to rewatch that Usher halftime shit nonstop. Like, why would you not do that? Exactly. Watch last year. She was at the Super Bowl last year, right? Kayla? Yeah. Uh, no. They won it last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, they're back to back. She was there last year. What's 2024? 20, no, she wasn't. She was not. I, she was there last year, bro. We're not doing that. No, I was. We can check that. She, she might have been there the other the one of the. No, she was no, there she's last been, year. no, she's been to the last one. No, they, they had broken up. Mm, that was a gap year. Really? Nah, I think she was I'm, there. I'm bro. actually kind of positive. Of I think she was there. We got to pull that up, Julian. I think she was when, there. When was I, when was I um, courtside at the Sparks, LA Sparks game? What year was that? <clears throat> Why would we know that? 
Because yeah. we were all here together. And I invited 2022. You. Then 100% they were, she was not at that Super Bowl. Because that day, all linked. And they, had so they, they yeah. won. They, uh, yeah, no, 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 I, they went 2020. And also, like, doesn't really matter. 2020 but. and then 23, 24. Oh, so they didn't win last year? No, they won. Okay. And I'm yeah. saying they were not oh, together okay. at that time because in 2022, 20, <clears throat> I remember. She was at 2020. Yes. And why I know that makes no sense to the listeners of why I'm adding this up with me being courtside at the LA Sparks game. That's a sick game to be courtside at. <laughs> was there to support Lexi? No, I, I, Lexi. I know why you were there, but I'm just saying, like, and now she's in our space too. Now I'm like, now I almost want to hit Lexi Brown. Like she's comp now. Like she went from a friend to competition. Yeah. That's the ops. Yeah, she's smoking shit in the media space now. That's what's up. Shout out to Lex, man. No, I, I love that she's she's doing well. But yeah, that. Night we left there to go link with Kayla, and that's why I'm like, oh, there's no way that they okay. were together at that time. Got you, okay. Mm. Um, not like, don't say, mm. not like that. No, I just you like. No, we just discussed it. That's all. Nah, that's cool. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> See this how this is why I don't even. Nah, like I never. Nah, it's, it's whatever. Bro. Nah, nah, that's your life. No, I get it. Nah, it's, uh, abby, 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 abby. <laughs> Music won the Super Bowl, so I think uh, commercial-wise, who had a better commercial run, Beyonce <laughs> or Kanye? I'm here to argue both. Beyonce has arguably the greatest commercial of all time. Arguably. It was, it was an incredible commercial of all time is, is a crazy statement when it comes to commercial. That might have been one of the greatest commercials of all time. That's, that's up there. It's in the conversation. The what, what was the brand that did the, the What's Up thing? What's Up? Oh. That was a beer. Was it that beer? Budweiser. 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 From Scream. Like, come on, man. Scary movie. That was like, yeah, to say, I think back to my point of the 20 year thing, we could start having conversations within year marks, but to say that Beyonce commercial was the best commercial is insane. Yeah, Beyonce of the United States? Like, she just turned her Botus. name into a fucking. Otis, yeah. Yeah, like, come on, bro. Beyonce, she's blood, I. She's blood president. Yeah, like that. Barbe. Was... That was cool. And then she dropped, she dropped two songs right after that. The end of the commercial was, okay, drop the music. That was my issue. That's insane. It dropped like that. That was my issue with being <clears throat> at a Super Bowl party with all of Julian's type. They were great, but I was the only one like scrambling once I realized Beyonce put a two pack out. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we could mute at commercial time. Like, yeah. can I throw this on the screen? Don't do that. White women love Beyonce. I agree, but, sure but your type, like, don't they, put this on. They're there for Taylor. They're not really there for Azad's for B. type. I didn't know any of those women. I wasn't there. There wasn't Azad. They, they were just friends. Azad wasn't fucking any of them. Yeah, but they were Swifties though. They were one hundred percent Swifties, yeah. which is fine. I yeah, like I love Taylor Swifties. too. So, what do you think but, of Texas Hold'em and Sixteen Carriages? Did you hear it, Matt? I think Sixteen Carriages is an incredible. Here's the thing. Ooh. I'm part of the Beehive. Yeah. Texas Hold'em to me was a a shitty. First single, because to me, it's very cheesy country. 16 Carriages is fucking nuts. Yeah. That record is so good. But Texas Hold'em, <laughs> where she went full country, to me, is very cheesy cruise ship type country. And I'm not a country fan, so I'm probably not the person that should be saying this. It just felt... Yeah, so you should shut it up. Felt like the way... All right, on, on Lemonade... Um, <laughs> you see how we... You used to shut up. Then you're not a country. On Lemonade, uh, <clears throat> Daddy's Lessons, or, or whatever the actual name is, Yeah, is a fire country record to me. Like, Beyonce okay. took country and made country Beyonce, but it's still country as fuck. Okay. Texas Hold'em, to me, was Beyonce damn near doing karaoke cosplay country. Whereas 16 Carriages is Beyonce taking country into her world and smoking shit. So I get the two pack, but me, I'm just speaking from my personal. Yeah. I, that Texas Hold'em, it may grow. I'm sure it'll grow on me. Mm. It's Beyonce and it's catchy. Yeah. I but like out it. The, but out I, the gate, I was like, out of the mm, two, it's, 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 it's two country. Is, like, is the one though, out of the two. I, w I was also a little disappointed though, because they were leading up to it even before the commercial when she was announcing, uh, what, what is it, March 29th? 29th. Yeah. That her album's coming out. Renaissance too. Remember, when we were in Mexico. And was told that Act Two was R and B and Act Three was country. Yeah, she flipped from it. from some pretty reliable sources. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when I saw just on the timeline and everything Act Two, uh, March 29th, I was like, Oh, we're about to get that Beyonce R and B album. Mm -hmm. And then the two pack came out. I was like, oh, Fuck. 
Yeah. It's the it's the country one. Mm -hmm. But I get it. I mean, Beyonce smoked R and B her whole career. So going from dance to country just to spice things up. Yeah. I, I understand it. Yeah. But I, as personally, I would have loved Act Two being this R and B version mm -hmm. that we were supposed to get. But that's fine. Take take your time more on the R and B stuff yeah, for Act I, Three. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> mad like, at it only because I I feel like uh you know Beyonce just doing country music now. I think out of you know. Obviously, she's a Texas girl. Yeah. And I think what it does for all of the girls that's from Texas, you know, most of them had to grow up around country music. Yeah, you yeah. had to hear it. You had to see it. <clears throat> yeah, I think that Travis hurt. Scott didn't make up the rodeo. It right. was a thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, so I, I think that this is a, this is a, a dope way for, for Beyonce to kind of like... <laughs> didn't make up Asher World either. <laughs> No, I didn't mean that in like no, a no, jab. I, no, I get it. They, no, it, felt, it felt it felt that way. No, no well, I mean, I it was it. literally an amusement park. Yeah. in Houston, which also died. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Didn't look, shock. Um, that's I just a cursed name. They can't bring back. That's just a. It's done. <clears throat> you just get rid of Asher. Just get rid of the word. I think that Beyonce. Um, I think she's gonna make it cool though for, to, for us to listen to. I do want to hear you know how she gives it to us, how she delivers this country music. I wanted I wanted to be more sixteen carriage vibe. Same. But sixteen characters is so good. <laughs> it's a like, really good. Really, I love really, a really, 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 really good record. Yeah, like, and I love. I know. I, of course, because I'm a nerd, I looked at all the credits. Having Raphael Sadiq a part of all this makes me like really excited. Yeah, <laughs> the way she did with Dream on the dance mm -hmm. Renaissance shit. Having Raphael Sadiq doing the country shit, I feel mm -hmm. like he'll pull it back a bit for people like me to enjoy this country. Yeah, but then again, even you won't save my soul. Being the introduction to Renaissance as a dance album, I didn't particularly like until it was on the album. Mm -hmm. You Won't Break My Soul. Again, we said on this podcast, it was I don't know, a little too predictable. Mm -hmm. Texas Hold'em's the same way, but I was wrong because Renaissance to me is incredible. Yeah. So once you I'm hit not it in gonna, the flow in the sequence, judge, in the sequence not, of the album, I'm not going to judge it Texas hit a little different. Yeah. because I judged Break My Soul and <clears throat> ended up loving it in Renaissance. Yeah. So, you know, but that's, I mean... I don't know. I'm so happy to be in the time that we are. Not to be deep and corny, but at that great Super Bowl in halftime Usher performance, we get a Beyonce two-pack, yeah. all in commercials. Like, what a cool time to just be here. Yeah. <laughs> Kanye's commercial, uh, which cost him $7 million, by the way, to, mm -hmm. to uh, produce. Well, it cost him zero production-wise because he shot on his phone. Well, how much was the phone? Right, it's true. Seven million, <coughs> six point five. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was a big win for him. And uh, he we, was in an Uber, like that might have been like thirty bucks, depending on where he was going. Yeah, we can discuss uh, the He's album, in the red. but the that <laughs> commercial led to uh, generating over two hundred ninety thousand orders, totaling nineteen point three million sales in sales in less than twenty four. Well, hours. everything on the site is now twenty dollars, right? I don't. Was that? The yeah, case? everything on everything on Yeezy is twenty dollars now. So uh, my homeboy bought two pair of the pods that were like two hundred dollars like last month. I want to buy he's, shit. He's throwing up right now. He's like, if I would have fucking known he was gonna release everything for twenty dollars, I would have just waited. Hmm. I'm like, first of all, you buying those ninja slippers is fucking crazy. Oh wow, everything is still twenty dollars. <clears throat> you thought I was just talking to you? Just no, I thought it might have just been for twenty four hours. No, it's twenty dollars. It's that's what it is on the site. Everything is twenty dollars now. Nineteen million. Listen, Kyle, we know okay. Kanye is 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 a genius. Yeah, he's sucks. obviously um, you know, one of the greatest creators of our time, but he just has a different approach of doing things. And sometimes it lands and sometimes it's kind of like, I don't know about that one. But this is this is dope to just put everything on your site, twenty dollars. Anybody that couldn't afford it before, I'm sure they can afford it now. Why not? I'm not mad at it. I'm laughing at anybody that spent two hundred dollars on those. Those pods, though. I don't particularly care about his commercial during the Super Bowl. I thought it was genius, too, to just do such a <laughs> regular lo-fi fucking on my phone. That's some thing. Kanye it, shit. It, it, it stood out immediately if you're watching these highly produced things, and then it looks like a phone. Yeah. There's genius in that, but I, I don't really care. I think it's great that he sold this much even after being canceled. I think it's a good representation of, of that whole thing, and we've talked about it a million times. What do y'all think of Vultures? That's where, like, that's where I'm at with this. Kanye Super Bowl shit does not, I don't care. Mm. What do we think about a Kanye West album in 2024 is where 
I'd like to talk. I don't care about his commercial. I don't care about his sales. I don't care about his. I clothes. thought the album was. I thought it was. I thought it was good. It's a, it's a few good songs on there that I like a lot. I don't know how much I'll go back to like the entire album, but there's a, there's a couple songs on there that I like. Interesting. Yeah. I kind of expected you, and I'm sorry that I've been thinking <clears throat> about you all weekend. It's okay. Of of certain I, topics I, we're going to talk about. It. Maybe that's why you were thinking about me. Yeah, I was thinking about you nonstop. I expected you to come in here and think it was the greatest album of all time. Why? Um, I just your mind state of the current culture in the world. Mm -hmm. I think you and Kanye align on on a lot of stuff, and I'm not saying bad things, but <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think you guys align on stuff. Mm -hmm. I think you respect everything that he's done, and mm -hmm. I think you would have had that mentality going into listening to Vultures and felt it as this is a revolt album to everything I've been going through. No, he's he's he he touched on a lot of the you know obviously the things that he's been going through and and, and dealing with um but the music to me was it was like I said a couple songs in there I really like. Some were just like okay that was cool, but it's not something that I was blown away by. Like it was, it's good music. But it's not I'm not I'm not like wow, this is some incredible Kanye, Todd Dollar, like this is like amazing like it was good. There's a, good, a few records on there I really like um, <clears throat> I only lived with it for like two days so far, so I'm not really like all the way through with it. But off the first few listens, it's some definitely some good songs in there. But I don't think it's the greatest album uh, of all time, or nothing like that. Is that how you feel about it? Like, where are you at with the album? Because I feel like I came in and y'all was playing it. You know where I'm at. So short, <laughs> short form answer before I get to my long form answer is I like it. It's really good. Mm. I think it's a good album. I think there's a lot of there's a few like wasteful records on it that I just have to skip through. Yeah. Production wise, though, I I, I think it's it's fucking incredible as far production. as production goes. Like, well, Kanye's gonna do that, you know that. And my problem with it, because I I listen to the album and why I like it is because I'm not overthinking on it. I just mm -hmm. like the music. Mm -hmm. But from a pod perspective, mm -hmm. and talking about it. I can't sit here and give Drake all the shit I gave him about giving immature content and the world hating Drake for being this age and giving immature content mm -hmm. when Kanye did that throughout this entire project. Like, there's some moments, of course, that Kanye is talking some shit, but for the most part, and I'm about to get on record and say, Kanye West might be the horniest rapper we've ever seen in our lives. Oh, uh, Uncle Luke might have something to say about that, but okay. Uncle Luke almost did it in a tasteful way. I feel like for the last 15 years, <clears throat> anytime Kanye raps, he is off of Viagra. <laughs> Popping like, Viagra. He's, he's a horny guy. And I'm not judging his horniness. It's yeah. not like he's on some non-consensual creepy shit. Be, no. If you're horny, be horny. Like, I'm not mad at you for that. Yeah. But I can't come in here to say, yo, I gave Drake so much shit for just talking about some young shit when... Vultures has a lot of young shit. And why I'm actually more mad at Kanye about that is because he went through so much shit in the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. And I think the rants, even if people hated them when they were in Vegas, all those live streams when Kanye was getting that shit off. Mm -hmm. I laughed at the Twix thing and I was getting fat. But throughout that whole thing, Kanye was really talking about some, some substance and a lot of shit that is really wrong right now, shit he's going through. Mm -hmm. He wants to be this guy. Now that he's been to this level and is with Elon and all that, he, he's in rooms that not even the biggest rapper could ever be in. Right. I didn't want like a, a science breakdown of that whole thing, but she didn't bring up shit. His mm. rants ha have all the substance and then the music now is horny shit. Like you just talk, you just talk about fucking young bitches. And here's the thing. I like vultures. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Kanye's probably the wor worst part of vultures. How he arranged everything Ty is is great. I mean, I think talk is incredible. And that's another point that referenced this that we go back to one day. I think talk is an incredible record. I think it has an incredible substance about his daughter, everything. And there's moments with Burn, like, but out of an hour album, you get 30 seconds at most of some some type of substance. Because I used to love why I used to love I think Kanye. There's only 30 seconds of substance on this album. 
I think there's bars in certain lines. If you add everything up, all right, maybe I'm underselling it. Maybe a minute and 30. Okay. Of of sub like any type of substance. <laughs> right. And and that maybe that's not the point. Maybe Vultures 2 that's about to come out or Vultures 3 has all of that. But I why I always thought Kanye was the fucking GOAT was because we got a record like Can't Tell Me Nothing. Kanye was the first one to me that made club records that had substance. Mm-hmm. Like he, that's why I think he's a goat. Mm -hmm. And these songs are fucking great. Like I've had this on repeat nonstop. I'm never not going to listen to this album. I like it a lot. Just watching someone melt down for three years about nothing but substance and shit that even if you disagree with him, we know it's coming from a place that he agrees with and he loves. Yeah. Did not address anything for the most part in the music. I mean, he, he was on. He gave some. He gave some some shots here and there. Yeah, but here and that, like even. I that, didn't want to. I see, didn't want to hear that on the album. See, that's honestly, where, and I hate to do the Kanye Drake thing, but I have to be consistent with my shit because I look like a hypocrite. For all the dogs, I was saying, yo, I think it's not. It's not Drake's best work, and there's a lot of young content on the shit. But there was moments where like Drake barred up and really gave me the type of Drake that I want. It mm-hmm. wasn't enough for me for all the dogs, right? But at least he tried. I don't even think Kanye tried to address anything on this. When I'm watching his three hour lives and going, even if I disagree with him, he's talking some shit. Uh, he's got a few Jews on the staff now, Rory. Yeah. R. Kelly's in the next Balenciaga ad. I'm not racist. Bar- that's a preference. He has some bars okay. on there. Yeah. He has some. That's what I'm saying. He okay, had so bars on there where he was right. addressing shit. Should we compare it to Kanye West? As far as when it comes to, no, but to bars and everything, but my thing I'm not is, racist. It's a preference. Is the is the one bar we're gonna break down no, from but, a Kanye West album? No, but but at the same time, I didn't he's Kanye hear, West. I didn't want to hear too much of what he's been ranting about in the music, though. I'm glad it, it wasn't too much. It wasn't oversaturated with that type of shit. And if it was any other artist, I actually would agree with you. But I've watched Kanye for his whole career make <clears throat> club songs, songs you ride in the car to kickback songs that all was him talking his shit and addressing everything and adding substance to party records, to chill records, to car records. He's, he's one of the only artists on earth that's capable of doing that. Mm-hmm. So I expect it from him. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's just a pretentious fan moment. Mm-hmm. But you were going crazy in Vegas on those lives. Right. <clears throat> None of it translated over here? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Maybe... But- I just didn't want to hear that in the music, though. Yeah, I, I'm kind of on Maul's side with it. Because, like, the thing that surprised me most about this album, and I think is why I enjoy it uh, a bit, is it's it's so cohesive. I was worried because of how Flawless. chaotic he's been. No, it's just how, flaws, never just But I don't like, think, I don't see, even though he has been, I don't ever think that's going to affect Kanye's music, though. It has, because he had that when? weird little Jesus pivot, and it, it just affected. Oh, but I no, mean, that, not, that, Jesus is King is actually great. Yeah, I'm, the music is yay, not the bad. The yay time when. It's awful. Yay is awful. <clears throat> awful. But like, I'm like, in Jesus my mind, King is actually pretty good. knowing what we knew like industry wise and even optically like the doing the camp in Dubai locking in with all these people the freak shit that that was going on like I was worried that all of that chaos would be reflected in the music and it wasn't yeah so for that I'm not mad at the album I get what Roy's saying substance wise lyrically it's not the kind that we knew grow and love but that's where he's at currently so for this fine this it's is not a, a bad this album. is a good product for the current yeah Kanye. yeah it's it's, it's that's that's a perfect. It's a it's a good product for the for the current Kanye. Yeah. Because like I said, I was heard some joints and I'm like, okay, like you know, all right. The music finally made it out. We didn't know the vultures was gonna happen at one point. We was like, did we never get this album? Finally got the product. Few songs on there I like. Few I'm kind of like, well, I'm cool. I probably would never listen to that again. But again, this is all in a matter of just two three days of listening to the project. So I don't, you know, what I mean, I don't want to go too crazy on it, but. It's not anything that I think is <clears throat> incredible when you talk about in terms of his catalog, but I think that for the current Kanye, this is good product so far. Sonically, this is exactly what I would like to hear from Kanye West at this point yeah. in his life. And again, even I'm cool with horny Kanye. I'm cool with, with balancing shit out. I just wanted, just give me something. Like you wanted him to get on his 
his rant shit. Yeah. On the outro. Like, what was um on on Pablo? <laughs> Rory wanted the outro of him telling us to go vote for. <laughs> that's what you Yo, go vote for Trump. I mean, that's what he would have said. Yeah, but you want that on the album? I don't want to hear that shit. I mean, even getting into bars when he was on the Trump shit of like, uh, what's um the Andre 3000 record from Donda. Like, even getting into that type of shit of like saying, I know you like my voice, but I didn't try to take your choice away. Like, him, him breaking down a lot of that stuff, even if I disagreed with Kanye at that time, I liked how he addressed that type of stuff in the music. Like, right. saying, everyone's really mad at me. I understand that. I didn't try to take y'all choice away. I just gave my voice to saying, I like Trump. I didn't, I didn't tell y'all you can't like him. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is missing in this project. And maybe that's not the purpose. And again, Vultures 2 could have all of that. Yeah. Oh, oh, 30 hours too. The rant he goes on at the end of that record too. I mean, 30 hours is, is crazy. Uh, no, I was talking about um, St. Pablo is what I was talking mm. about. That, yeah. that record is... Because even you could say Pablo had some chaotic moments and didn't have like the best substance stuff when he was still going crazy. He took some time out that album though to give us a lot of his point of view of where he was at at the time. And I, that's, I'm never not going to be that fan. People get mad at my, my reviews of stuff. I'm never not going to be the fan that doesn't want to know about <clears throat> a person when they're putting an album up. I always want to know for real where you're at in your yeah. life. I think that's important. That's how I get connected to music. So, Do you guys think, because uh, we're looking at in the same echoing of Beyonce, Renaissance 1 being the dance, Renaissance 2 being country, and what we can assume 3 is the R&B, do we think Kanye will take stylistically approaches with this one? Or do you think it'll just be more of the same on Vultures 2 and 3? I think it'll be more of the same. I think they're just going to travel, live life a little bit, and just make music wherever they at, lock in the studio, record a couple records. But I don't think the content is going to change much. Yeah, I, I, I want to give Kanye the credit that I think this one, maybe he was testing the waters and he might get his shit off on Vultures too. <clears throat> mm. Because how do we, like, when do we know Kanye West is not trying to get his shit off? I mean, like a Yeezy like, like, sounding like, album. Like, I'm, I'm oh, not, you're saying, not, you're saying sonic, okay, lyrically, okay, gotcha, I mean, gotcha, more gotcha, on, gotcha, on, the, on the style of music. Like, would he go into, yeah, like a, a Yeezus, more um, that EDM? No, because I, I don't think he's really experimented um, for quite some time. Like, Donda, I think, is an incredible album. Uh, it, it made me feel so much better coming off the yay shit and everything. Like Kanye West is still Kanye West. I think it's a great album. Not crazy experimental shit in there. Yeah. Which is fine. I think yeah. it's a great album and not not every single time do you have to experiment. Mm -hmm. I just think that's out of Kanye's bag at this point. I, just his brain. I, he could do it. <clears throat> yeah. I just don't know if he's in the mind state to go experiment. And does it matter? It doesn't. I'm just curious. Because um, uh, I'm, yeah, think about I, it, I don't like, know. shit. Now, bro, we get we get so much music now. Like, it, I don't even think that Kanye could give us the most amazing album and say all the shit we want to hear. And in three weeks, four weeks, we're not going to even be talking about this shit. Yeah, I just don't know if, if Kanye is rightfully so in the brain that I need to change the landscape of music every time I come out because I'm focused on changing the landscape of the world. And you could disagree with that, but that's what I think Kanye mm -hmm. views. Uh, we've seen that. He's, he was trying to build a city. Like, right. I, I just don't think he's going to dedicate his time to changing the landscape of music. And at this age, I don't know if that's his responsibility. And I'm not shitting on the younger generation. I'm actually saying quite the opposite. I don't think this, the younger generation is going to look to Kanye to change the landscape and follow suit. Right. It's not 808s and heartbreaks time. Mm -hmm. Like these kids are obviously influenced by that, mm -hmm. but they're not looking to 45 year old Kanye West <clears throat> to change the music landscape for us to follow the beat of his drum anymore. Right. So yeah, like I, that's why I think Vulture sonically is great. I, I didn't need Kanye to go extra left to some vibes I've never heard in my entire life. Mm. I just don't think it's that world anymore. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. I, I I think it's just again the way we and how much music we receive now. I just don't know if it even matters anymore. Pardon my good my, music always matters. Putting out good music always matters, but I just think that we just we just move on so so quick now from 
beautiful moments and beautiful pieces of music to where it's like, as an artist, I can I can see how people will be like, yo, I'm not for what like. Nobody's gonna care about this album in a month or two months. Like nobody's gonna be talking about this shit. Nobody's gonna be playing these songs. There's gonna be a shitload of music that's come out after my release. Like, so I just think the times of us getting those moments of those albums where it's like, yo, this is something that we can't get move away from. I think th- that's slowly dying because we just receive so much new music every well, I week. Mean, like, that's why moments mean so much more. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, exactly. I know I know calling the Super Bowl halftime a moment is a little disrespectful, but that's going to live longer than Usher's album that came out the same weekend. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, absolutely. Like that, absolutely. So what you're saying is completely right. Like moments are what are valuable at this point. But that's I, not like the, if the uh, the Usher album. Listen, and we don't have to get. Totally into the if Usher, Usher doesn't album, have but the number one album next week, is that a flop? If who? If Usher doesn't have the number one album next week, I don't know what it's no, up against. No, I don't, I don't think that's oh, a flop. Oh, well, Kanye. It's exactly. I don't think Kanye is going to have a <clears throat> number one record. Currently is a number one. Oh, is it? Okay, I'll take it back. On but this what is what the, I'm oh, saying. Wait, on hip hop or Vulture? Oh, I mean, just saying, yeah, I guess it's two different charts. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about built like across. I, I like SOS Usher, is probably still up there with Taylor if Swift. If Usher like, doesn't, bro, he just did the Super Bowl. Still. Why is that? A, but he did a Super Bowl again. Back to our point of a legacy act doing it. Yeah, but that if was you do based a Super off that. Bowl and, that didn't and mean people are going to go album the same weekend. The the value in the Super Bowl is that everyone's going to go stream the playlist that was of the Super oh, Bowl for sure. I don't think the people that were not Usher fans this is that Usher. are now going to go stream everything to spike his streams out. The yeah, but this is still are going to go listen to what he performed. Like they're not going to go Those to are, the new you about, you Usher the, album. You talking about the casual <laughs> like, fans? Yeah, that, but that's who <clears throat> casual fans are. The only people that spike streams. One hundred percent. They're the only people that actually, and it sucks. The only people that really matter well, as like far as moving voters. the needles. Yeah. Not well, to, not you, even that. But. Well, you need to like capture their attention before they go on to the next person. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, there's this is the hot one because it's on my timeline. And then I'll go to this one because. But this up. is still I think, I think, Like this is still a huge. To be quite honest, I think you could get <laughs> you got it bad or caught up being number one next week before you'd ever get the new Usher album. My chart. boo cracked. Uh, yeah, some like, chart. It's back in the. Yeah, mix I'm, I'm on sure iTunes. my boo is. I'm sure someone's gonna chipmunk it for TikTok. I'm, everything from there is That's going sick. to end up being number one. The my boo challenge is you go up behind some dude's woman. Mm. Kiss her I'd neck love, and I'd put your hand on her stomach. Challenge. And then get killed. On Yo, yeah, Josh, yeah. And then get stabbed. Go, go do that challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Entertain uh, me, I'm, please. I'm, That's a challenge. I'll click on that hashtag. Well, to malls, to counter malls earlier point about the moment music. SZA today marks uh, a full year of um, SOS being in the top 10 Billboard 200. Mm-hmm. So those moments exist. It's rare. And it's obviously it's harder. SZA to do. is at the peak of her. If Usher was SZA's age in this era and Confessions came out, it would do the same but thing. But Kanye's which capable is, which of is why, that. Which is why she should have won album of the year. Agreed. Fair. But, I'm, I'm with you on that. But I'm saying Kanye's capable of doing that level of music. Oh, for sure. So. I mean, yeah, I, of Absolutely. course, Kanye West is capable. Well, I'm, so I'm yeah. saying, like, I don't like the whole. I don't think. Like, I don't think anything on this album is going to spike where Kanye was years ago, like streaming wise. It, I'm sure it'll do great, but it's not going to do what it's not going to beat SOS even now. Mm. No, it's just different no, times. No. Like, I, yeah, what do you really expect of anybody putting music out if they're not Drake, Taylor, SZA, everyone? Including all the legends. Yeah. I think Usher's album is going to do <clears throat> just okay based off the number, the number of people that look at numbers as a success or not. It'll be average as fuck. Mm-hmm. But I think that would have happened no matter what. That's not the quality of music. That's just the time we're in. Yeah. He could have put out the greatest shit ever, but that's just where Usher yeah. is at the moment as far as new music goes. Mm-hmm. Everyone will go buy tickets to his residency. He did the fucking Super Bowl. But those points are so separate from trying to put out new music in this era. Yeah. That it it's just we weird. Want, we, want, yeah. we want the we want the hits that we grew up with that we yeah. love. That's I mean, that's how streaming works. Yeah. It's either yeah. the new young kids and the young audience pushing that shit or legacy doing their legacy shit. Mm. That's I mean, that's just how it goes. 
Julian, I'm a little scared to bring up this last topic, but since we're still talking about Super Bowl, I was, I was. There he is, your president. I'm, your man. I know I'm going to agree with them all, but I didn't want to stir. I didn't want to stir things up. I didn't want to rile them all up about this whole Listen, shit. Listen, man, see the but beautiful thing about me. this is the weirdest me, fucking thing I've ever seen. The beautiful thing about when I say shit and go. I look crazy oh, and I sound crazy is <laughs> it all comes back. It all comes back. And here things you come go. full circle. Oh, man. Gotta love it. Here goes 4-6. Go ahead. Talk about them. Nah, three six well, sixty because yeah. you full circle like I guess what they I heard they called you down the hood three sixty they never called me that nobody, <laughs> it was the waves no. and like your point of view never nobody ever was called no nah, everyone called tells me, me in the Bronx that was your okay. not at all <laughs> for those that don't know <sighs> after the Chiefs won the Super Bowl Joe Biden which we know he did not tweet but his team tweeted from his verified POTUS account. A photo of him with some red demonic eyes saying, this is the way we drew it up. Just like we drew it up. And that's based off everyone saying that, that they were behind the Super Bowl and that it was all scripted. And then Taylor Swift was going to get on to the field and then endorse Joe Biden after the win. And that's why the Chiefs are even in the Super Bowl. So I was get- it Taylor Swift and somebody else said if Trump wins, they're moving. They're not living in America. It was telling somebody like what eight years ago? Yeah, I was gonna say one when. No, I think this was recent. Oh, like if he wins this upcoming election. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that at all. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not moving. We know that. <laughs> we know Taylor's not moving anywhere. How do y'all feel? Like, I'm fine with the social media teams of presidents or figures like this to try to make them relatable and i understand i understand people are trying to do their job and lean into jokes and we're we're in a whole different time now and you have to be relatable but why are we turning in the potus account to make a meme a funny meme account is now that the president of the united states shit it's a trash meme bro and granted don't get too excited because this is trump's fault at the end of the day because trump was always trump was the one that turned the presidency into some mockery shit as far as social media went. And I think there is some importance in the stuff that he did say, where you right. have to be as professional. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But now you're literally like, this is some fuck Jerry meme account shit that they turned the president of the United States Twitter into. This is crazy. Like, have you went grocery shopping lately? I don't want to see a joke from your account on the Super Bowl. Is Joe Biden the least most relatable president in your life now? Yeah, I don't really relate to dead people, Maul. So. No, I mean like he fucking sucks. Every other president in your lifetime, you kind they did something that you kind of was like Bill Clinton loved basketball, loved jazz music, loved, right? Loved head. Loved head. Yeah. Who doesn't? You know what I mean? Dude, shout workplace. out Arbor Day. Yeah, shout out to Matter of fact, Day. I, I yeah. don't know. Bill Clinton might have been the most relatable president. Now that now that we really think about it, I mean he's still a big piece of shit, but you know, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, I don't relate but to that's him. what makes a good president. No president oh, is a oh, good oh, president. Oh, 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 Every president oh, a mall. You're going to contradict Whoa. yourself because you don't think Trump's a piece of shit. Yeah. So. Whoa. Go ahead. <laughs> Talk about it. Is Trump a good person? He's a douchebag. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. He's from Queens. <laughs> He's from Queens. He's from New York City. <laughs> He's a rich New York douchebag. Who, who doesn't know Of course he's that? a douchebag. <laughs> who doesn't know that? Like... He's Come from on. Jamaica Estates. I've never met. I've <laughs> never met someone from Jamaica Estates that wasn't a douchebag. Exactly. Yeah, man. How, but how did y'all feel? Like to me, everything that they try to kill Trump over, and this is where I think the Democrats just fucking lose in every stance that they take. They killed Trump for making a mockery of the presidency, which I agreed with in a lot of ways. Yeah. So what is this? You saw it worked for Trump, and now you're making a mockery after you're accusing him of making they, a mockery. They trying to get on their Trump shit. They trying to do what they trying to do. They trying to run Trump's playbook. The stupid thing with this, nobody likes Biden. It's as someone that like did and currently does still in some capacity social media on behalf of other people, you still have to take in mind and consider the person in which you're speaking on behalf of. Right. So this tweet oh, makes it look you, like. Did you take that in, into consideration when you retweeted me uh, being happy <laughs> that Kappas were part of? Usher's performance and then putting a video of me uh, stepping. 
Yeah, yeah, very yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Come on, contradict well. yourself like the Democrats. That's not contradictory. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me take into no. consideration. Somebody. Yeah, you, you no, throwing no, a video up No, but me. then Julian, that's his thing. He tries to get up. It's performing very well. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck. No, no. You didn't think that, about me once no, when you posted because, that. No, well, you took a shot at Maul. Fuck that, because they don't know what we're talking. You took a shot at Maul in the group chat. Yeah. The group then, chat. You didn't post it in the group we chat. Just you said, put it on our, our Twitter account. You guys did. You guys put the group chat on me with the whole Drake thing. I never had to say, I never said oh, so this is your publicly, way, yeah. This is your way to get even. You know, it was my get back. Okay, got you. All right. And I used a video of Rory to, for my get back. It's not like I made some shit. I didn't put devil eyes on Rory. Right. I would have preferred like, that. like 3% of him's in the tunnel. I didn't do that. Right. I didn't do any you of that. put out a video, I of, also, video yeah. of him. Yeah. I also, by the way, I know people clown it, and that's why I was <laughs> actually really not mad that Julian posted that. I don't think that video is as bad as people think it's, it is. It's amazing. It's a great yeah, video. Yeah, it's not a bad video. Yeah, we fucking did that choreography ourselves. Like, I mean, of course it's not incredible, yeah, but it wasn't like Usher at the Super Bowl, but it's okay. It what it wasn't like <laughs> Usher at SOBs. I'm, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not comparing it to anything. I'm saying that was shot on a phone in 2010. That wasn't meant for y'all to see. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, some some things are like, just not meant for the like, like people in kill kill me if I put that that out. As if we like really didn't rehearse that for two days, made up that choreography yeah. real quick. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> that was on a stage at a commuter school shot on a phone camera. That wasn't supposed to be good. Yeah, that was a great video. But my point is it, with, with Biden and the people that are running these accounts is you can't jump in on a narrative because that's all they do is all these teams just scour analytics and see what the narrative of is course. and try to find their in. Oh, no, we know that. But they're not enhancing the narrative. They're just regurgitating and repeating bullshit. And then Biden, what? He's going to go out there tomorrow and give a speech where he forgets half of it. And for 15 seconds, it's just like, oh, uh, uh. it's like you got to match the person in which you're speaking on behalf of because this tweet makes it look like he's in on the culture and he gets the joke. Yeah. And then he's going to go out there like a Roomba and not say shit for yeah. 20 that's, seconds. That's yeah. see, that's my problem. Unless with you making, give him some ice cream. With yeah, making and, and a girl's yeah. hair to sniff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's his, you know, you know how athletes do smelling salt? That's Biden. Give him the 12 year old girl's hair and he'll fucking wake up. What is this shit, bro? I fight. <laughs> Look, you guys really think I'm like Democrat Biden? I hate Biden. He's awful. He's fucking awful. Trump sucks too. I'm not saying vote for oh, him man. either. They that's both hilarious. suck. Yeah. And I'm fine with social media managers and all that shit doing what they need to do in the times. Uh, but. Look at where we are as a country. That that happened from the president of the United States Twitter that has not addressed why every time I go to fucking Whole Foods, I'm spending $400 and I'm paying for the bags as well. Two bags of groceries. Yeah. Like, and all you come on. Yeah. Like, vegetables. Man, fuck like that. Like, I, bro, I don't care about uh. your sarcastic joke about the NFL, even though I thought it was funny and I understand what you were doing. That's not that's like we're about to go into an election year and, and you want to make jokes. You're gonna make me get political. <laughs> no, I was pissed. I deleted a tweet last night. I I wrote a whole thing out. I quote tweeted Joe Biden and I was that pissed off. <laughs> All right. This is at like 2 a.m. on some like, yo, what the fuck or what is the world at at this point? That's your president. You wanna know maybe okay, fuck Biden. You voted for him, Julie. Don't do that. I don't, don't do that. Fuck okay, fuck Biden, fuck the this what we're current. The thing that you know maybe most agitated during the Super Bowl. Sorry, well, if you're a Democrat, why did, I know you I know you're from the Bay. <laughs> yeah. And and pardon pardon the uh pardon the demo of the neighborhood that we live in. But why did we let the Israelis get a commercial in the middle of the Super Bowl uh using a speechwriter for MLK? That's what pissed me off. They hijacked a civil rights speechwriter. I didn't see that commercial. Oh it mall this is what happened it was a black man and it worked with a pen like i used to write speeches for martin luther king i'm you know we're you know great people which they were and are yo being mlk's quentin miller is crazy yeah it's pretty fun what a and flex I, and i don't even like i don't even like that he's doing this since mlk is dead i need to hear his side not like, only that what if mlk Rory, wrote all his rhymes yeah. and now this guy's lying they use this man to then prop up israel somehow it became a campaign for, so they were using the the the, <laughs> the slave like the civil rights movement activists yeah. to prop up a current genocide yeah. where they're on the obviously Israel's on the offensive. And during the Super Bowl, Israel put an airstrike out over on Gaza and killed a hundred hundred civilians in the middle of the game on some yeah no we're the good guys vote for us we got your the guy with the black guy with the nice penmanship and here's some missiles just 
Wait, Wait this happened those, during though. the Super Bowl? This is during the Super Bowl. They they called the airstrike. A <laughs> hundred people in a safe zone. Clean. That's sick. No, it was. We touchdown. Told, we, we told Hamas, them not to be there. As they would say, <laughs> touchdown. Yeah. It was Hamas. Hamas no, it was a Hamas. <laughs> it was a rogue Hamas missile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was an errant throw by <laughs> Eli Manning. <laughs> it was an interception. Yeah, it was, in a, yeah, it was a pick six. Hundred. Six thousand. What are they up to now? How many people have they killed? How many babies? <laughs> That's sick, man. I, ju- I, I just feel like Israel's probably a fan of the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We'll, we'll fuck That's, them. Shit. <laughs> That's sick. Good. I don't know if we should cut that out of there. They play their game in the Iron Dome. That's sick. That's sick. Wait, why is it sick? <laughs> Come on, man. I've been so... Listen, you... No, Y'all I, know, I know and our listeners know how I feel about Israel and what side I stand on. No, for sure. So, I, yeah, I'm making a joke, but everyone knows where I stand on Bro, this that entire commercial shit. pissed me the fuck I off. I didn't see that commercial. It's, I'll show it to you. It's so... It's beyond But, but I mean, all right, what, did that shock you? Because <laughs> anything on Twitter, X, whatever, Instagram, I get nonstop Israel ads. This is an ad. No, I know. Ad, we're, like, look, we're funding it. Their, so, their social media pen. team yeah. is better than any social media team that's ever existed. And I'm not going to go into this because I know. See, this is why this is why I was quiet during this whole thing because you're going to get me fucking started. <laughs> that community has had the best PR social media team their entire existence. Yeah, of course. We mm-hmm. thought they wouldn't get a Super Bowl ad, right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not taking away for any bad things that have happened to that community. I'm not saying that bad things have not happened, and you guys have not been victims before. I'm with you. I get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. October. But 7th they are sucked. the great. They are the. Gr- <clears throat> They have the greatest PR team on earth. Of course, I'm surprised they didn't cut Usher's performance in between Burn and You Got It Bad to throw an ad in. That's a sick segue. <laughs> Just to, 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 to choose to I, start I, an airstrike? No, 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 no. Burn, I was about burn. like... I, I, <laughs> I'm a great writer. I don't know what y'all want from me. That's um, sick. Yo, speak. All right, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go down this this thing. But there was one more commercial that agitated me. Volkswagen. You guys remember that one? I watched the the V Dub. You see how the the Germans try to rewrite history with their ad campaign? No. You know, Volkswagen started by Nazi yeah. Germany in mm-hmm. 1937. So did, I believe. So did Mercedes. So did. Yeah, yeah. So did all a lot of great products. Hugo yeah. Boss, great coats. Yeah. Um, so they they uh, did a commercial which was pretty much them resurrecting the beetle but it's an e beetle it's a uh whatever electric. runs on electric okay so they were like okay well here's the inception of the company they started the history in 1949 they missed the glory years yeah it yeah. started in 49 and then yeah. immediately fast forwarded to the hippie movement yeah, like, yeah this yeah. is where we really popped <laughs> off <laughs> no it's not <laughs> and then the last shot is them like unveiling a cargo ship and the e beetle like kind of pulls out slowly it's like well, if you were going to do the history of the company, start yeah. at the beginning of the company. Yeah. Not <laughs> 15 years in. <coughs> People love to, you know. We love rewriting history. I love to hit that edit button on certain we, errors. As, and we shouldn't even need to rewrite histories. We should just have fucking common sense and logic. Why all these brands are the powerhouses they are is because they were proven to win wars. Right. <laughs> and of G-Wagon. course, I know, the, I know the Germans lost, but, you know, they, made, they definitely did some damage. <laughs> we... We look at these brands like they have this terrible history. I'm like, why do you think these brands have lasted so long? They, yeah. They're proven to be effective <laughs> since the 1800s. Like, yeah. that's why they are legacy brands. Nobody, yeah. w- nobody in that time was wondering the easiest way to get to Whole Foods. The only way to prove a brand was in war. <laughs> that's the only way. Highways were created because of war. We yeah. were in local streets. Until they needed to put militaries on bigger streets. Highways right. are because of war. Everything we have is because it was proven to work in war. So know. why are we judging Hugo Boss, VW? Every, this is how we got here. All I'm saying is Kanye bumped, bumped into the CEO of Adidas today and took a picture with him. That was a nice photo. <laughs> it's a very nice photo. But well, we're going to revisit some things I said a few months ago about Kanye and Adidas. Vultures 2 will have Adidas merch? Nah. <laughs> just Not, saying. I just don't think Ye would do it. I, I, don't, I don't want him to do it. I don't think he would do it. But, you know. He said they had a great conversation. Yeah. But that CEO wasn't even there during that whole thing, right? No. I guess it's a new CEO. No, it's a new guy. Yeah. yeah so does that count? Yeah. It still counts. It's the company. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, no. For Ye, like... I. I would have done the same thing. 
<laughs> yeah. that just proves your point. But I mean, does it? I, I, <laughs> that CEO really has no. He's not. I don't think he's going to do business with Kanye. There's just no attachment to it at all. Mm -hmm. I think he's trying to clean up a lot of that as well, and it's fine with just being like, "Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a photo with you." Never going to work. But oh no, yeah, I mean, take the photo. But if it know, was the CEO that fired him, now we have a whole different conversation. Yeah, but still. Taking that photo, they know what that photo was going to do, what it could yeah. represent, what it just the conversations that it could start. Another company started by Nazis. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we just got to keep a let's keep an eye on that, on that Kanye. Everything $20 on the site now. What, what, it kind of sound like they're clearing house, clearing the warehouse out yeah, to kind of make room. One of my favorite Chappelle lines <laughs> the student has passed the teacher. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> Oh, Chappelle's a genius. Um, do we have voicemails? You've got mail. Yeah, we got a... This is actually a fun one today. It's from a, a teacher. Ironically. Yeah. I guess the students... Have to hey, what's up? It's Maddie from Denver. And I'm a high school teacher. And I'm kind of like the Discord youth correspondent. So whenever y'all ask about, oh, but what do the kids think? I ask my students. Um, there's actually no closure on iSpice versus anybody. Um... Some of them said Quavo, some of them said Chris Brown, but whatever. The question is really about what kind of high school kid were you and who do you think was the biggest menace amongst everyone on the crew? Discord thinks it's Julian. So looking forward to hear the answer. Hope y'all are well. Bye. Maddie from Denver. Thank you for that voicemail. Uh, who was the biggest menace in high school? What was the, I, I didn't understand the Ice Spice <clears throat> reference to that question. Well, she was saying she uses her students as uh, youth correspondents. Okay. So she was like, is Ice Spice... Great, and who's better, Quavo or Chris? Which they were split on. Those kids don't know shit. Well, they're um, the youth. They're I mean, poor. yeah, this, they're the kids we were so talking they're about. They're next up. Actually, I, but I, I would brag she's if I were Dem you. I, she's from Colorado. I thought it would have mm -hmm. been a. I don't think it would be split fifty fifty, but you know, I think it's better for you that mm -hmm. she said it was split I fifty fifty. Too, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and so. anyways, we'll get to that ice spice lotto shit on the next episode. But to answer our question, I was not the menace in my crew in high school. I, um, I, I was not the menace at all. I wasn't the menace. I was, I was, uh, I had my moments of doing some menace shit, but I wasn't like the kid that they was like, we have to get him out of this school. Like, that's what I think when I hear menace. It's like the one that is disrupting the entire school and representing the school in a bad way. I, now I did shit that I wasn't supposed to be doing and things like that, but uh, I didn't, I was scared of my mom. So I didn't fuck around too much. Yeah. High, high school, I was. <clears throat> I became more of a menace after because of the friends I was hanging out with. I think that's probably a, a direct response to why I was kicked out of college for knocking out an RA. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my style. When you go into an environment that's not as menacing mm -hmm. and then someone does something that you would feel like they'd get knocked out mm -hmm. for, <clears throat> that's, yeah, I wasn't a menace. I was taught by menaces. Yeah. And once I got to a non-menacing environment, I became a I was the menace when I thought I was the the calmest human being on earth. Right. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a menace. <laughs> I didn't, I I get what she thinks that it's me and I can see that in some regard. I was the talks too much in class, shocking. Um and I was always disruptive cuz I always wanted to just make a joke over everything. But that being said, I was a very good student. Uh, teachers loved me, um, and I had a good relationship with them. So it was like it was like I, he's annoying, but we can't. You know what I mean? Okay, you know what? Maybe I, I'm taking her word "menace" in a different way. <laughs> I was definitely a disruptive, <laughs> quote unquote, bad kid per se. Mm -hmm. But when I think menace, I think yeah, I was like, never, I was like never the kids disrespectful. I was like, were me like menaces. I, no, to me, well, you got I, kicked I was a, out I was of school. <clears throat> but Are you talking was, high school high or school, college? Yeah, like, no, college I got kicked out. I'm saying high school I was around menacing fucking people and I was the calm one based off that menacing environment. Mm -hmm. When I got to college, which was not menacing, I looked like a menace because we were not in... All my friends would have got kicked out of college way before I did. I just was put in a situation that if somebody did and said what they did as an RA anybody around me would have knocked them out. Mm -hmm. I would have been the last one to knock them out if it was my <clears throat> high school friends. Got you. But yeah, I still knocked them out. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Like, they would have knocked him out way quicker than I would have. But 
I, yeah, I was in an, and I looked like a menace because no one at my college was like menacing in that regard. I remember one time I got in school suspension. The only one time, when I say one time, I mean the only time. And it was my senior year. I was already committed to my college. I, think it was, I was coasting. And it was because I was late. I was always on time throughout my whole high school career. And at the senior, I was like, I don't care anymore. I'm showing up late. And I got like three lates in a row, whatever they said. And they were like, well, you got to miss classes and come to school on time and sit in an in-school suspension room for the, for the duration of the school day. Mm-hmm. And I, I looked loved, at, I loved in school. I looked at the principal <laughs> who, I was, who I was friends with, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Why would I? Why would I come?" I was like, "What's the incentive for me to come to school on time, to then to not attend my classes and miss the the educational experience to sit in a room and what fill out a packet and sit quiet for six hours?" And he was like, <laughs> "I was like, why would I do that? Why wouldn't I not show up for this one?" And he was like. I mean, yeah, you got it. You're right. He's like, just show up and go to class. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Like, if I'm going to be on time, let me go to class. Don't right. make me sit in this room. And he was like, yeah, we'll get rid of it. Don't worry about it. And that was it. I, I liked in-school suspensions because the few times I got suspended where I had to stay home, my mom I never had was, a, was the menace of having to now figure out she has to stay from work. Like, she was... She was the menace. In school suspensions, I love yeah, what you're saying. They just sat you in a fucking room so for six boring. hours. You just, you just sat there and <coughs> I thought that shit was fine. I'd rather be home. I guess what I'm saying. No, like, I, I would have rather be been there, home too. Let me my, go to mom class. Was, my mom was really upset when the two times that it happened out of school suspensions. I think I had like three or four in school suspensions, but that was in high school. That was like middle school and junior high. I liked sitting in that fucking room. Like, yeah. What were your offenses? And, and my mom didn't know that I had in school suspensions. Oh, they didn't tell. What what did you do? What was your like, did you have a repeat thing or what was your Um, again, I I was which I've talked about a lot. I was a uh, angry kid. So yeah, I, I always had an aggression problem. <coughs> you could see that, right? I had a, I had a lot of Britney in me. Brought the knives <laughs> to school. Listen, man, it, it's yeah. tough when you don't know how to read and people make fun of you. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Stand up and read. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm um, gonna go fight somebody. Yeah, and I, I had a lot of aggression problems when I was young. Not to say I don't now, but yeah. I, I wasn't a bad kid, man. Like looking back, like looking at some of these kids now in high school, I was I wasn't a bad kid. Yeah, I didn't do shit. I did, like you said, talk too much and yeah. you know, joke around and shit like that. But I wasn't I wasn't bad. Like I wasn't I wasn't doing shit that was like you could point out like, yo, he's going to the penitentiary. I, I got co- I got suspended from not even preschool, like with whatever that like well, no, I guess it was like preschool. How do you get suspended when Not you're five? Preschool. Yeah, I guess. No, it was, be- it was before kindergarten. <laughs> Wait, kindergarten how you get- I just caught that. <laughs> you're five. You got suspended in preschool? I, it's not I even school yet. I would, have to, like ask, I would have to ask. What you not mom, go to sleep to during nap exactly time? Exactly what it was. Did you fucking steal the telegrams? Like, like, you shit your cot. I, I will explain exactly what it was. <laughs> shit your cot. <laughs> Did you shit on your cot during nap time? <laughs> you drank someone else's juice. <laughs> What'd you do? Uh, how did you get suspended from preschool? I don't know if it was exactly preschool. It was before kindergarten for sure. But I think it was Either like, or. It's it was like, but it was like daycare. It was like daycare, but also, I guess, I don't, it wasn't school because it was in somebody's like, well, that's kind of where they are. Apartment building that, but the whole like first floor was a yeah. daycare type thing. But, yeah. So I don't remember why I like, shoved this kid and bit him like i bit him i shoved and bit <laughs> another kid yeah. that was, but like not in like a okay that's just a a kid like this may end up being a serial killer yeah type way and my mom picked me up and i'll never forget i'm gonna have her send me a voice note to tell the story to, to play it on the pod she drove me she was so fucking mad at me i have like very limited memories of my childhood like at that age, but this one I vividly remember. Drove me to my dad's work because my parents were together at this time. <clears throat> drove me to my dad's work. We didn't go in, just drove past it to tell me that I was about to get my ass whooped when I got home. Yeah. Gangster. Wait till I get off. <laughs> Where'd you bite him? Stomach. Yo. <laughs> you it, right? was a, it was a... 
No. How you go from here? No, wait, 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 wait. Why are you asking? You don't. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. This is great. Why are you asking if I'm okay? No, I'm not okay. Sorry, unpack. Give us somebody on the stomach. Give us the play-by-play. I pushed and like ended up on top of him. I don't know why he must have did something because like I wasn't a. I'm gonna go after somebody. I wasn't a bully. I was. That's what I'm saying. I wasn't a bad kid. I was just a reactive kid. I had anger problems. When people picked on me, I. I always came back. Yeah. Like I never started shit. I was. Right. He must have done something, and I yeah I pushed him, and then I didn't know you know I didn't know martial arts, at five, and yeah bit the shit out of him like bit like bad bad. You drew blood. Yeah, like I I don't remember <laughs> if I drew blood, but based off what my mom has retold this story to me and the few memories I have, I like really injured. Like really injured a child. Look at Rory Osborne. Like I, I dug my the little teeth I had into his stomach. Rory Lecter over here. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, Rory shows up that's the not, next. That, Rory shows up the next day with a face what, what, mask. Wait, you with a muscle. Floyd Mayweather. I, it was human nature. <laughs> human no, nature. No, it wasn't. I've, I've never that. once looked at We're a animals. Kid. Animals bite. bite. I've never bit nobody in my life. <laughs> I mean, you have David Attenborough on there right <laughs> <you're> there. Like, <laughs> that's not normal. That's why you got suspended because it's not normal. That's not normal. Oh, no, no, no. You know what's funny? I didn't get suspended. Just they called my mom immediately to pick me up to get me out of preschool or whatever the fuck it was uh -huh. at that time. And my mom picked me up in the middle of her work day. That's why she was so fucking mad and then drove me past my dad's work to say when he gets off, because she had got called out of her work yeah. to pick so me now up. She's pissed. But I never, I didn't get suspended. Like I didn't, I went back to daycare the next day. So did your dad beat your ass? Yeah. <clears throat> Way to go, Dad! I, it was the it was the only time outside of the one time me and my dad fought when I was a teenager that he ever put his hands on me. Mm. What do you mean you fought? Like you squared up? Yeah, he he beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beat my ass. <laughs> Squaring up with your pops is That's crazy, and, and it was it was my it was all my fault. Like <clears throat> I love my dad. I I was wrong. I I was right in my aggression towards why him. I was wanted to fight him. Yeah. But I I was wasn't there we yet. wasn't in the right yeah, league. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't there yet. <laughs> Still too young. And he and he went he went easy on me just to teach me. Yeah, just give you a little <laughs> let you feel that man you. strength a little bit. Yeah, it didn't I I was like, Dad, I didn't know he was that strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotta let you feel that man strip pop you one time. Scared, Bow! scared me. Yeah, my, I might have been like <laughs> 16. Yeah, he, he he let me know that he was my pops. <laughs> yeah, I never had that. It was my fault. My dad would have never done that had I not been the aggressor. Oh, yeah. In that. Yeah. that was the one time like I was just really hurt. And it, yeah. he was like, all right, if, we, if you want to do that, all right, bet. <laughs> right. Yo, fuck the fight. What was that post? Like, did you... Shake hands? Did you like get dinner after? Like, how did the post fight interaction with the go? kid or with his pops? With his dad? Oh. No, not the kid. Oh no, I, him and I were not in a good space at that time. I think we got in a good space when I was like twenty three. So you got to think sixteen to twenty three, and it wasn't because of that fight. But yeah, we weren't in a good place to begin with. So yeah, got you. So yeah, I, and we, him and I have never really even talked about that. To be quite honest, because I don't. I mean. I took my once I got a little older, I, I got the lesson. <laughs> yeah. You get it makes sense when you get older. Like yeah. I, I understood I understand why I got some of the ass whoops I got growing up. Yeah, I, but I you didn't totally fight. Get it. Like that's different. <clears throat> Getting your ass kicked by your parent versus squaring up against I know. Them. I, I was not bold enough to I told you the one time my mom hit me with she was hitting me with something. Maybe it was a so belt. The tennis racket was what really No, the got tennis it. racket was I didn't even know my mom played tennis. I don't know, still don't know where she got that tennis racket from. But um and my mom was hitting me with a belt. And I remember I was around that age. I started feeling well, that, myself. That was the, the preschool thing. The only time my father ever did it, it was with a belt yeah. when he got home. Yeah. So my mom was hitting me with the belt, but it wasn't. I was at the age where the belt wasn't hurting me anymore. So then like she hit me and I like I put my arm up and the belt wrapped around my arm. Like it kind of like just like curled around my arm and I pulled the belt out of her, her hand. Mm. And in that moment, she looked at me. She was like. Like she stepped back and looked at me like, oh, like you think you, and then she went in the kitchen and got something. I don't know what it was. And I was just like, okay, I can't do nothing with this right here. But that, that won't wrap around. That's, 
That's made of that's a cast iron pan. That's not gonna wrap around. Yeah, my that's arm. gonna wrap around my brain yeah. and, and turn me into a vegetable. So yeah, I mean, but I never squared up with my mom. Hell no. No, I never squared up with my mom either. But I, I definitely had that uh, corny, almost like movie moment of I'm the man of this house, and boy did my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if I don't live here. You yeah. you do. <laughs> so what? I don't sleep here. It's still my house. <laughs> It's That's still my house. Crazy. Yeah, him and I have never. Maybe I should talk to him about that one. Day. Maybe, but I like again as someone that is open about a lot of their traumas. That was it was never traumatic to me. Yeah, like no. it actually thought it was more of a, a lesson in a good moment. You needed that. You <laughs> yeah, needed that. yeah. I thought it was that was fine. Yeah, yeah. And even the preschool over. Yeah, I shouldn't be fucking biting kids till they bleed. Yeah, that's weird. I didn't. I, mean, I, I didn't, guess squaring up. I don't think dad. I went with the intention. <clears throat> I was like five. I yeah, but once I, you felt flesh, you, you kind of just was like, "That's it. I got it. Yeah, just go all the way now." I appreciate that you think I had such a developed brain at that point. Yeah, but yeah. You felt this the flesh, and you was like, "Oh, that's that's not a shirt." I guess squaring up with your dad is a healthier route than uh, how Marvin Gaye and his dad settled things. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, and that's a very drastic. At least you guys didn't have a conversation after. Yeah. And my dad and I share guns, so that's, yeah, probably better. I want to talk about that logic and his dad uh, having that uh, one that interview or that conversation with each other on camera. What do you think about it? I don't know. I just <clears throat> we could save it for the next episode, but I just don't. I don't. I just feel like that's a conversation, I, and I get it. That conversation will help others in a situation similar to that, and help them. But I just feel like everything is not content, bro. I just feel like some shit is just supposed to be like that's so that that's so intimate and such like a a real thing that I just don't think that camera should be recording that. That's just how I feel about that. I'm with you. I I wouldn't do that, but I don't know if you're a very hurt kid and you're trying to get over something and Everybody's trying to go off your success financially based off you talking about traumas and it it is very painful to you. Maybe I need to show my pops how this shit goes. Like you sit here and de devote your whole pain to the world if you want to also get the money from it. Because I have to get a lot of the, the backlash and bullshit based off what happened to me and you want the success of it, but not the the backlash or the trauma of telling the world how fucked up things are in your life. Like, I'm not saying his pop signed up for it, nor does your family need to go through the public scrutiny for them to financially profit off your success. But yeah. I yeah, but everything is just I, I, not camera. No, it's I, not, I agree. I would never do what he did. I, yeah, I wouldn't. I but, but I'm also. I don't. Not, I don't think everyone should go off how I feel. But like to have microphones and cameras and. But but imagine. Us, all right. I don't. Logic, mm. which we said to him, on camera. I, he's not my type of music. Mm -hmm. I think he's a good dude. Mm -hmm. I like him as a person. Mm -hmm. Not my type of music, but I am aware that a lot of his music does deal with the trauma that he's been through in his life. I know he had a very a very rough upbringing. <laughs> I know people clown him because he tries to talk about it, myself included. You know he's black? I learned no, that from I, the interview. I had no idea. You didn't know Logic? He, he's being very sorry. No, his dad. I just didn't see. I never saw his dad. I didn't know he was black. How did you think Logic was biracial? You thought his mom was black? Or did you not know he's biracial? Yeah, I just didn't know. He's being very sarcastic no, I'm, right I'm, now. That's serious. That's, um, I thought it was. I thought it was very telling and insightful and educational. So, all right, put your logic's black. Put yourself in that situation. The world's that healed. Myself included, clowns him for that all the time. <laughs> and you do this: I'm black, I'm white, I'm black, and I'm white, and I'm black, 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 and I'm white, and I'm white. Like the all the hooks of his songs. Mm -hmm. That's the and same you get all that ridicule, but you're also <laughs> a multimillionaire and have to deal with. That's the other thing I don't think people realize when people rap about all that pain and trauma that they talk about. Just because y'all like the song doesn't mean that they don't have to still deal with that. Yeah. I watched the clip of him talking about his nine fucking siblings and all this other shit. Mm -hmm. Everyone's asking for something. <clears throat> and I'm profiting off all of this based off the shit I put out to the world. And the world outside of 
my core fan base is also clowning me about this. If y'all want some of this money, come sit in the chair with me and see how much this sucks. You put me through a lot of shit when I was a kid. Now when I talk about this trauma, thank God I've made a life for myself. But I also get a lot of pushback and you still want money. See how it feels. I don't, I, I completely disagree with it. Yeah. I'm just trying to uh, figure out, looking at it from maybe his perspective, where, <clears throat> do I think maybe he was exploiting his dad? Sure, and I'm fine with that point of view. But also logic doesn't view things the way the rest of us do, or any artist or any successful person in that matter, or anyone that's been through that type of trauma. Yeah. Like, stop asking me for money. All right, you wanna do that? Then sit with me and let's talk about it on camera. Let's go make some money together. Yeah. And if you, if you want, uh, Oh, I would never. Do, I would yeah. never do that. Yeah, uh, but I have a theory, and I think, like most artists, especially someone like Logic, who's been successful for over a decade at this point. I mean, he's been so multimillionaire. Time. He's yeah, he's doing fine. Well, not just financially. I mean, like I think mentally, his a lot of artists build their sense of value through the gratification and support of other people through the consumer. So for him to pour out his heart and do these things and expose just himself. Then it's like, okay, I'm doing this for myself. But he's like, he's talked about his family though in his music. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying he's doing it the best he can, dolo. Like he's like, this is, I'm speaking on behalf of my le legacy, my family, my lineage. So I think now, I think it's more so like, I need to, I need to ramp this up a bit and prove that I'm right more than I can communicate via the music. So let me put my dad on camera put this out to the people that I seek the gratis the set the, the comments from the gratification from and then receive the positive feedback that I do with my music that's I don't that's the an angle that okay. I would look at well I guess my, my question with everything with how music has changed and how content is so important <clears throat> to be tied to music we've never been mad at an artist pouring their heart out about their family members naming specific family members everything that they went through whether it be Girlfriends, wives, kids, their childhood. That was always fine. We actually encouraged and thought that was what made great artists. Now that the world has shifted and content is so important, what is the difference? Is it not exploitation the same way? Because now I'm talking to my family mem member rather than doing it over a beat? It's more personal. Like, like how is it? How, co how come we never said it was exploitation <laughs> when we've loved every artist? to talk about their traumas, their entire life, name yeah, names, do everything. Because your dad is actually sitting right there yeah. now with the camera. Right. There was face. a level of anonymity. No, I'm, 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 ask, I'm, not, I'm asking a question. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a level times of, have changed. With yeah, music, like, there's a level of anonymity. And you, yes, everyone has a dad, everyone has a mom. Eminem talked about killing his mom a thousand fucking times. But we, we, she wasn't sitting across from him. And she wasn't in her. the booth and he was yeah. like rapping at her. Like. It was just like, theoretically, not theoretically, if he was being literal or not, you know he has a mom, but you still don't know who that woman is. Yeah, this is like, yo, dad, you're sitting, do this because I want you to do this and I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, sure. I just, I, yeah, it's just not, it's something about that. It's just, it's too personal. But like, keep that, keep that family, keep that in house, deal with that. I'm not saying don't have the conversation and talk, but keep that to the family. We don't, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't be privy to that conversation between you and your dad. Like, I but shouldn't. I, we could say that about so many great, Rappers like, should I be privy that Hove shot his older brother? Like, it's a lot of trauma shit that we champion. And again, I would never sit with my dad and do something like that. And right. would like, but you wouldn't do it because it's too personal. It's but too but also, I'm not logic, so I can't base everything off of the trauma that logic went through. Where him trying to heal, and when you're trying to heal, sometimes you do vindictive things because you want people to feel the same pain you felt and sat him there to yet yeah, straight up exploit him and make him feel the fucking pain that he's had to feel but what you're saying and that no it's fucked up but like i'm not again like we can't judge everyone based off how they're trying to heal even though i i completely disagree with what he did and i think he probably did exploit his dad yeah but but what you're saying outside of the sit down on the artist perspective we do in podcasts and like you just said you're the incident you had with your dad You've never talked about it or addressed it, but here we are talking about it and sharing that with our audience. So it's like, it's not, I'm not saying you're exploiting that system, but I'm saying, what would it, what would it be? You're comfortable doing that because this is your art and we're comfortable saying things that we probably haven't said to people to their face. 
but you wouldn't do this shit on this camera in this on this format with him there because it's not appropriate to do it like that but you can I know, I, talk I, about I, it i agree with you with us. i think there's plenty of things i don't find appropriate but i'm also not in that person's shoes and don't understand how they're dealing with probably uh, a way drastically different life than i had I, I think logic probably went through a lot of a lot of shit i think a lot of times we clown that guy because he's a extremely hurt soul and went through a lot of shit that most of us could never overcome. Mm-hmm. So that's where I give him some grace, even though I, I'm not a fan of his music per se. <clears throat> I have listened to it, and I don't think he's lying. I don't think a lot of us could go through what Logic went through. I, I have not been through half of what Logic went through. I don't think he's lying. It's fucked up. So how could I sit here and imagine somebody that's gotten to this success, now has two kids, wife, and is, is really trying to... Has, has had his dad try to be a grandpa and is trying to heal some shit he went through where no one was looking out for him, is going about it the only way he knows how. And I think we can all say that's fucking wrong, but who are we to say that? I just think Who that are we to say it? I just think it's a little too intimate, a little too personal. Agreed, but... Uh, and I know that, you know, things like that now are all over the internet. People just... Nothing is private anymore. Nothing is, you know... Everything is to, for content. Everything is to share with the world and get a reaction and go viral and things like that. But I just, it's just certain things that I just can't, I just can't get with the new, the new times when it comes to certain things like that. Like that conversation to me is like, I think have that conversation maybe when y'all are in a more healed, better space, then y'all could, you know, because it seems like it's still a lot of hurt and a lot of like emotions there behind what happened you know, as a child growing up. But I think if y'all get past that and are in a better space, you know, as far as personally and y'all and y'all lives with each other, then I think, you know, have your dad on say, listen, man, me and my dad been, you know, going through therapy. We've been doing all of this. We've been trying to we've been healing. We our relationship is great now. You know, it was times where as a kid, you know, I missed him and I wanted him around for these moments and things like that. But I think when it's still like fresh and it's still like a lot of you know, things that haven't been discussed, I think that that is something you can't give. It's too, it's too, it's too, it's too intimate. And I personally completely agree with you and and we can close this and close the episode. I will, the last thing I will say is, can you not understand when someone has felt extremely powerless their entire life based off the people that were supposed to raise them once they get the power to return some some of that energy. Yeah. I felt powerless my whole life <clears throat> and now I have the power. And it's You it's, felt powerless in, in in terms of what? I mean, I just based off what I watched with with that interview, I, I yeah, I feel like Logic feels like he was very much abandoned and not cared for and now that he has been successful is now cared for. Mm. And he felt powerless his whole life to feel like he had nothing, nobody cared for him. Mm. And then to now have somebody come back to say, hey, can you help me? Mm-hmm. It was like, where were you when I needed help? And I, I again, I don't agree with how he went about it, but yeah. I can <clears throat> totally can see how it. someone could feel that way once they they now have the power. So now I can feel, now I can make you feel like you're powerless. Now I can make you feel what I felt my whole childhood because now I'm the one in control. Yeah. No, because like my that just, have that moment, but like don't because this is where I, I lean back to my initial theory. If you if it's really about <laughs> you controlling the narrative, not controlling the narrative, but being in that moment of power, then don't give it, don't share this with people that have nothing to do with this shit and let them be and not only I think he's seeking to do it, the validation from other people. I think it was less about him having that one over this We had dad. that whole conversation with yeah. Logic. We had that conversation with Logic in Malibu about that whole thing. We know yeah. that's how he thinks. Well, I don't so, know. I wasn't eating sushi with you guys. My bad. I didn't And well name. Adam Sandler was there too. Um <laughs> in basketball shorts. Drop his ring. You may have, you may have heard you may have heard, may have heard of him. But no, to that exact point, yeah, that we know logic to be that. So if you know someone that is looking for validation from the rest of the world and has felt powerless their whole life, the only way he knows how to go about this whole thing once he now has the power is to do what he did. Again, I'm not agreeing with it, but yeah. we need to put context to this yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't like that. 
I, I don't either. Yeah. I, I don't I don't either. I get it, but but <clears throat> how can I shit on somebody when you add context into it? Even if I disagree with it, I know where it came from. Yeah, he's doing what he thinks he's doing what he's comfortable or what he's known or what he what he feels needs to be done. But I think that there's a lot of real growing and real maturity that's lacking on the back end. It's really mature and big of him to have that moment with his dad and talk, but it's it's also now we're 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 but how how can you have maturity? We're losing. In, how can you maturity have maturity in within way? how you deal with your family when your family never gave you maturity? No, that's fair. No, I'm like not. How, look, I'm not. I'm not. We're asking logic to move around at this age with no point of reference when it comes to family. How did he handle his dad? He never had a dad. How could he know how to handle his dad? His dad didn't know how to handle his son. But I'm saying, like, do the growth. He was supposed to be the do teacher. Do the growth in private. That's that's unfair to put on somebody. Even even though I agree with you, that's unfair. It's just it's just more work to put cameras and mics on. It's yeah. It is. Even, if it, even if it work. is no, even if that's that is your tactic, work. even like, if like, that on, brings man. you some sort of joy. And again, I think <laughs> the joy comes from other people talking about it. But have that moment and record to Maul's point. Have ten of these conversations. Record all of them. Fucking stick a camera in your asshole. But when when you're actually healed and you guys are in a very good place. Then like release them so you can but also reflect, have me, those moments, and then be. Well, by the time all of them are out, you're not even really worried about the comments because you guys are cool. To you're me, that's good. to me that's more. That's a, that's exploiting in its definition to me. If your goal is to do all that, I honestly, which I know people disagree with me, I think Logic really put those cameras on and had that combo. If he's planning all of this strategically and like <clears throat> we should do episodes this way and like let's turn the cameras on, I could chop shit up. Then at this point you are exploiting this entire How is conversation. This not exploiting right now. No, it is. But if I if you're just it, like if you start doing a planning calculated. rollout with it, 100%. like like chopping all that up. A one eight hundred number's coming. What? Like that this, this that like, was an exploitation. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed your dad at ba at ba baseball practice, yo, having a one eight hundred number to miss your dad is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Call me. I'll talk to you. Okay. Who, who would be okay, the but sometimes, dad? but sometimes is exploitation good? <laughs> a bunch of dads. I'll say who would be the dad? On it? <laughs> because no, the, the the bit is you call the three digit number and no one answers. <laughs> it's just dial tone. Dad's not here. Yeah. He's at dad work. went to go get cigarettes. He's at my, work. Da my dad, dad, so, works? My dad is so old right now, doesn't know how to use the dad phone. Dad went to the bodega. <laughs> Somebody yeah. has to pay the bills right here, son. Left on green. <laughs> <laughs> but is exploitation good sometimes? Because even though I, I feel Logic exploited the suicide number, isn't there kind of proven data that it helped? It helped what? People that wanted to kill themselves. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, just logically, if you break it down. No pun not intended. Logically, yeah, no on time. I just think that. If, if you're you punching would, in three digits versus seven, you're saving time. You're probably going to get in contact. Listen, man, I just someone. think that if you had thoughts of killing yourself and the Logic song made you not kill yourself, I think you should still kill yourself. <laughs> Finding your solace you're in fucking, that song. You're fucked up more than we we would ever know. Like, if you heard a lot of song, it was like, nah, bro, I can't do this. It's like, nah. It's bro. bigger than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, fam, you might really need to kill yourself. <laughs> also, by the way, as someone that's that's been in that yeah. place before, I, I was not watching the VMAs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an award like, show. Yeah, like, I, if I'm thinking I'm talking, about killing I've, I've myself, been, I've I'm not been in, into the VMAs. I have been in a suicidal place more than once before. I promise you, I didn't. I was not watching an award show during Same, it. Same, bro. I was listening to the weekend, trying to overdose on cocaine, dying my sleep. I wasn't banging three one whatever the fuck one eight hundred suicide. I remember somebody oh, yeah, told me they was not sitting there like, oh, the number and like you know how long it would take if you're that depressed to write that whole number down Leo, from the on. TV. Cut it out. Remember somebody told me they was thinking about killing themselves, but this nigga was paying <laughs> was all his me? bills oh. on time. He was just paying his bills. I'm like, what the fuck you paying bills for if you plan on killing yourself? Well, what would you need the money for? Okay, I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to go a different route with that. I kind no, of, no. Now I kind of agree with you. <laughs> yeah, like, yo, this nigga was paying his bills the first of every month. Shut off. I'm like, fam, didn't you just say you was going to kill yourself like last month? Why are you paying your bills? So you're saying the first sign of you mean it is to cut off auto pay. I'm just saying, just dog. Torture like, credit score. I just think people that are like, About from it. what I've seen, that talking about killing themselves, they just, it's like you you want that attention. You want somebody to feel like, oh, shit, he's That's thinking about killing himself. 
I'm just saying from my experiences with people that I know. See, this is where I thought I don't you, think you were going to go. Ever, now I'm mistaken. You, this is the place you're going. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. you no, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. They never, never mind. You're going to the place I thought you were going. Right. I'm just saying from my personal experience. I'm not saying, oh, obviously some people have gone through it and like, had a high success Don't talk about rate. something you don't know about. <laughs> no, I'm just saying for people that have said it to me, that they've expressed to me that they've yeah, thought about Rory's killing themselves. Rory's here. Rory never like, told me he thought about killing himself. He just said it. I've said talking about multiple times. But I've never, in the time, like hit mall and was like, yo. Yeah, like he never hit me. He was like, yo, I oh, think like this in is the it. moment? No, you'd be That's the last person. That's what he's talking person. about. Like in the moment. I should be the first. You hit and Maul. we are we already know based off all the depression, suicide conversations I've had in my seven years of podcasting, Maul would never be my first call. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you like, call Maul. Like, like, <laughs> you call Maul and Maul's like, you still here? <laughs> um, yo, yo, you call me. Maul, like, Maul would be like, yo, honestly, <laughs> Nick, Nick's up 10. Yeah, like, like I ain't, like, I ain't think, got time for this shit, bro. Wait for the fourth quarter. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yo, win, I'll, I'll call you back. Think of that <laughs> metaphor. Yo, just don't jump in front of my train. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, don't do that, fam. Like, I got somewhere to go. Don't, don't, don't kill yourself in front of my train. Don't do that. That's, that's, what, uh, that's well, actually fucking up. <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> Maul took it exactly where you thought it go. Because I was about to give him so much credit because I thought he was about to say, yo, you're paying all your bills, bro. Like, why would you kill you? Like, look at the great position you're in. Why would you kill yourself? And nah. Yeah. Nah. Went right there. I'm that friend that's just going to be like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, shut up. You're not killing yourself. Like, <laughs> no, it wouldn't be. That would get be off really, my phone. That would be so helpful in that moment. Yeah, I, I think up. it's better than that 1-800 number. No. They should have had me answer the hotline. Well, what would you if someone uh, let's let's play this out? Ring, 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 ring. ring. All right, man, hold on. Ring, <laughs> yo. Oh man, look, uh, my my life's in shambles. I I I'm losing my house. My wife divorced me. I I can't see my kids. I I'm I'm gonna end it. No, don't don't do that. Because now you're gonna make him have a conversation. I have <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's play. No, 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 no. Are let, you let, on three way? No, let me redo it. <laughs> Where's your father? <laughs> I have, I have. Are a, you on three way? I have a. Actual, I didn't notice this was a conference call. I have a actual chemical imbalance where no matter what is going on in my life, good oh. based off what y'all think, I'm ready to fucking kill myself. Go, because he he just brought up a bunch of points that you could retort. Like, are you ready to kill yourself based on chemical? Uh, take two edibles. Go get some haze. Weed is your yeah. answer. Yeah, that's it. I smoke a lot of weed. But what kind of weed though? <laughs> like, see, <laughs> what kind? See, what's the, good what's the strain you're smoking? <laughs> like, what kind? Who's your supplier? Like, because you might be smoking some some garbage. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get you on. I'm a, I know somebody that knows somebody. We're going to get you right. We're going to get you a pack. And everything's going to be all right, man. All right? Don't kill yourself. Okay. Give me some. Another guy two, saved. Two, two weeks later. <clears throat> Yo, I've been, I've been with that pack for two weeks smoking it nonstop with the shit that you suggested. Yeah. I still, based off the chemical imbalance in my brain, still. I'm ready to kill myself. Hey, I, I had a two weeks life lifespan to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you still here? <laughs> like, yo, that was two weeks. <laughs> yo, yo, for real? Yo, you yo, still I here? I gave you time to get your affairs in order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gave you time. <laughs> you got to thank me. I'm a you had two weeks of goodbyes. Yeah, <laughs> like, I helped you in two weeks. <laughs> yo. Back to fathers. You know how oh sensitive my, my pops is anytime somebody dies because he doesn't know how to handle emotions or death? He always says, yo, I wish I would have borrowed money from him. <laughs> mm. Yeah, how many funerals have I been to since you've met me? Every single time my pops goes, wish I would have borrowed money. <laughs> this is sick I get it. it. It's hilarious. Because no, if you bro. think about it, if I would have known, All right, I'd have to pay it back. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm dying over here, man. Yeah, you uh, awful. Ambrell, and, oh, Ambrell man. needs to upload the shit. Yeah. Um, sorry, bro. This uh, is the latest we've recorded an episode, guys. Listen, man, this was cool. Night, night pod was Nightcast. cool. Nightcast. Um, March 23rd, we are at the Howard Theater in DC. Yes. Tickets available now, new Rory and uh, merch is available. Uh, and subscribe to the Patreon. Thank you for everybody subscribing. Yeah. And we'll t <laughs> excuse me, I'm sick, I'm fucked up. We'll talk to y'all soon. Be safe, be blessed. I'm that nigga, he's just ginger. Peace. No, Warrior Ma!